Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the, uh, show's about to start Oh yeah, it's the Saturday show It's the Saturday show it's a Saturday show. 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 Beautiful day, isn't it, Toby? Breakfast is served, fellas. Bon appetit. This looks good, Fred. You're really coming into your own with your cooking. Thanks, pal. Yeah, Fred, some of the dishes you've made have been top notch. Aw, thanks, big guy. I've been trying real hard to hone my skills. I think I've even gotten better at making human food. That one there is called Toad in the Hole. Where'd you learn to make this one, Fred? I picked that one up from one of my cooking classes. You're taking cooking classes, Fred? Absolutely, Otto. My goal is to be the best frog chef there ever was. An admirable goal, if I do say so myself. Thank you, Otto. So, Fred, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? Well, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Go for it, Fred. Well, there's a girl in my cooking class. Her name is Tasha, and well... Do you like her, Fred? I kind of do, Toby, but I've got a problem. What kind of problem? Oh, it's not a big problem. Just kind of a small problem, but it could be a big problem if... Fred, what is it? Well, Tasha said she wanted to go visit an art museum with me. That's great, dude. Yeah, except I don't know very much about art, and I'd like to impress her. Sounds like you do like her, Fred. Toby, be nice. And don't worry, Fred, I have an idea. Let me make a few phone calls, and Toby, you can introduce the word of the day. Well, you heard him, folks. Up next is Kashi and Christopher with the word of the day. Hey, Kashi, how's my portrait coming along? It's coming along fine. Number five paintbrush, please. <laughs> there you go. You must really like art, don't you, Kashi? Number two, please. Oh, yeah, I love all kinds of art. Here you go. You know, Kashi, I can't wait to see my portrait. Yeah, you might be kind of surprised by it. Can I have the pink marker, please? Sure, here you go. All right, Carol. <laughs> Kashi, do you like going to museums? I love art museums, especially sculpture. Can I have the scissors, please? Okay, but be careful with these, all right, Kashi? And hey, while you're working, I think we should do the word of the day. And, you know, I have to leave pretty soon to go on an art walk with Big Fred and the rest of the Saturday Show gang. Hey, there you go. Thanks. Do you want to activate Lexi? Oh, sure. Well, let's see what the word of the day is, Kashi. Do you need a hand? <laughs> Do you know what that says? It says abs. That's right. It does say abstract. Do you know what abstract art is? Well, kind of. 
kind of, not really. <laughs> abstract art is a kind of representation that some people say is not very realistic looking. Oh. Yeah. That might be a good word for my picture. <laughs> okay. And you know, today's episode is all about art. Hey, are you almost ready to show the painting? Yes, I am almost ready. Wait, I am ready. But first, I think we should do the summer game code, don't you? Okay. Here it is. It's seven letters. It's a word from French. And it means to take a bunch of stuff and usually you glue them all together and you make a brand new piece of art from the collection. Oh, wow. There's a word for that? That's right. And if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for big, big points. points. That's right. All right. Shall we take a look? Yeah, I'm ready. Great. Wow, Kashi. It's wonderful. I love it. And I think I can see a likeness of myself in there. You know, though, I've got to run because I've got to go join the Saturday Show Art Walk. I'll see you next time. So long. Okay, Fred, to aid you on your quest, I've arranged for you to meet with the gang at this location. Oh, thanks, Otto. Should I bring anything with me? Just a sharp eye, my friend. Do you want us to go with you, Fred? That's okay, Toby. You know I'm a pretty independent fella. And anyways, you guys have the show to host. Yeah, Toby. Big Fred will be A-OK. -okay. Sounds good to me. Well, I'm going to take off my apron and head out. You fellas have a good show. See you soon, Fred. Where'd you send him off to, Otto? He's going to meet up with the gang for an art walk. Ooh, sounds like fun. I hope it is. So, Toby, what do we have next? I thought you'd never ask, bud. Since Fred's going on an art walk and then going to the art museum, I think today's episode should be all about art. And I've got the perfect person to kick us off. Lucy's got an awesome social art project that everyone can do at home. Check it out. Hi, I'm working on this really cool project where I am making these miniature works of art called artist trading cards or ATCs. ATCs were started as a conceptual art project by the Swiss artist M. Bensi Sternemann in 1997. He wanted to create an art project that required people to work together, required collaboration. You can make artist trading cards with any arts or crafts materials that you have around. There are only two rules. First, cards must be two and a half by three and a half inches. This is the same size as a baseball card or a Pokemon card. And you should sign and date your cards on the back. Otherwise, you could do whatever you want. You can trade your finished cards with other ATC makers, or you can just work on building a collection of your own. Have fun. What is it? It's made mostly of wood, but it also has a metal rod and some screws. It can move. 
and it's shaped like a human. What is it? gonna be fun Fred art walk are you guys ready to go let's go see some art I think I'm ready to go let's see what's what art walk! <laughs> Rosenthal, a UM alumnus, and it's one of five in the country, and it's called the Endover, and it's one of my favorite places to meet in public, and it's also spinning and turning. Oh, Christopher, you gotta be careful, man. Let me help you out. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> This is definitely art. Art doesn't have to be a drawing or a painting or a photograph. It can be...
this art thing. Thank you so much, everyone. It seems like art is everywhere. You just have to know to look for it. Good luck, Good luck Brad. Brad. Have, have fun, fun at the museum. museum. Thanks. One of my favorite paintings is Vincent Van Gogh's Bedroom in Arles. I love the story behind it and also the fact that Van Gogh loved painting everything around him. In this case, it was his new bedroom in a new town he had just moved to. Van Gogh was so happy and hopeful to be here, so he wanted to make a picture of his new room for his brother. This room is really simple, but Van Gogh painted it using really bright colors to show just how special it was to him. In fact, Van Gogh loved this painting so much that he ended up painting it three different times. Each time just slightly different. So if you look at all three of them at once, it's like playing spot the difference. One of my favorite paintings I've ever made is called Rituals Plants. I wanted to paint something that I really enjoy doing. And for me, that's both painting and working with plants. I had so much fun painting all the many little leaves and all the details in this painting. I hope you like it. Hi, my favorite artist is Romare Bearden. My favorite piece by him is called The Conversation. The favorite piece that I've made is called She of Tranquility. Let's take a draw break. Now this draw break takes time and patience, but if you stick with it, you'll have a very cool optical illusion at the end. You'll need a hard surface, a piece of paper, and a pencil. Fold that sheet of paper in half. Then, draw a gentle curving line across the middle of it. Really make sure the curves are gentle and not too steep. Next, draw eight dots along this line, spaced at all different distances from each other. Now draw bumps to connect each of these dots along the top and along the bottom. Great. Now pick one of these bumps, it doesn't need to be this one, and camp out on it. Start and end at the same two dots and keep drawing bumps extending out from them. As the bumps grow bigger and bigger, you'll notice that the sides grow darker and darker as you travel the same path back up and back down again and again. Now these bumps might balloon out a little bit or start to wobble off to one side. That's great. Okay, now grab a scrap sheet of paper and slip it underneath your drawing page. Continue to draw those bumps right off the edge of the page, like this. Perfect! Now pick a new bump somewhere else on the page and camp out there. Pretty soon you'll notice that in some places you only have space to cram in a few extra bumps. That's okay too. Some bumps balloon out and others get pinched off. Wherever you can, extend your drawing right off the page. Pretty soon you have yourself a wild and crazy design. Cool, huh? Now you can keep your optical illusion as is, or you can add shadow or colors to make it really pop. Thanks for taking a draw break with me. I've always loved art philosophy. For example, what is art? Are we art? Is art art? Um, a shark? You have a phone call. It's art. Um. Hey, Kashi! Hi, Sally! I've got a joke for you! Okay! What does Salvador Dali have for breakfast? What does Salvador Dali have for breakfast? I don't know. A bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Katie, I got a joke for you. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Art. 
R two D two. Ha! Yes, funny. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. What is it? It's a wooden mannequin. Artists use these to help them draw the human figure. They can be posed all different sorts of ways. A mannequin. Otto, did Fred make it back from his art walk? He sure did, Toby. He's getting ready for his museum visit. Tasha is going to be here any minute. Ooh, Fred and Tasha sitting. Toby. What? Be professional. Okay. Was that the door? I'll get it. It's probably for me. Tasha. Hi Fred, you're looking dapper today. Oh, thanks. You're looking nice as well. Thank you, Fred. Well, are you all ready to visit the Fart Museum? Did you, uh, did you, uh, say we're going to the Fart Museum? <laughs> Fred, don't worry. I was just kidding. There's no such thing as a Fart Museum. I like her, Otto. Oh, uh, good. So, the art museum then? Absolutely. I can't wait to go. Alright, fellas. I'm off. I'll see you later. Bye, Fred. Bye, Tasha. Have fun! Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy! Today is the day I get to go camping! Gotta get Toby. Toby? No. Toby? No. Toby? Ah, there you are. Oh, hey Otto, you ready to go? I certainly am, Toby. Do you have everything packed? I have everything except your to-go bag. Do you have that? Yep, I put it by the front door. I've got my clothes and my fishing pole and my hat. I'm all set to see the great state of Michigan. All right, seems like we're almost ready to go. There's one more thing to do. We've got to call Lucy and make sure she's got everything she needs to host the show. I'm on it. Oh. Hello? Hi, Lucy. Oh boy, am I excited. Me and Toby are going camping today. Oh, I'm glad you're finally getting to go, Otto. Thanks, Lucy. And do you have everything you need to host the show? I sure do. As a matter of fact, I was just reading a book about Michigan. Glad to know you're prepared. Although, I didn't expect anything else. I hope you have fun hosting the show. Bye! It's a Saturday show. 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 It's a Saturday show.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Saturday show. Was that my doorbell? Hold on a second. I better get that. Hello? Hello? You're a flamingo in Michigan. I'm Clarissa. I left my home in the Caribbean five days ago. The Caribbean? That's quite a distance. You want to come in? So it sounds like you flew from a very great distance to get here. I, as a flamingo, can fly over 350 miles at one time. I stopped here today because I saw all this water from up above. What is this place? Well, this is Michigan. Michigan? Tell me all about it. Food, water sources, culture? Well, Clarissa, I'm not from Michigan either, but you know, I have an idea about who we could ask. I bet that the Saturday Show friends could help us out. What is it that you want to know? Absolutely everything. Well, we'll start with my friends Kashi and Christopher, who will tell us the word of the day. Word of the day? How quaint! Marco! Marco! Ah, Polo! Hey, Kashi, there you are. Oh, hi, you found me. <laughs> I did, and look who else I found. Oh, hi, Lexi. <laughs> it's Lexi. You know, Kashi, we're filming on location today, location in Michigan, oh. because this episode is all about Michigan. Well, we're at the Peony Garden in Ann Arbor on the campus of the University of Michigan and the peonies are just about to pop. Oh wait, so we're in a garden full we... of flowers called peonies? That's right, and they're going to be so beautiful. I just love it here. Are you ready for our word of the day? Yeah! Okay, let's talk to Lexi and see what she's got for us. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? It says Paw Paw. <laughs> That's right, it does say Paw Paw. What's a Paw Paw? Well, a Paw Paw is a delicious fruit. You have to wait until it gets a little bit soft. And it's also a city in Southwest Michigan. Oh. And are you ready for the summer game code? I am. Okay, here it is. It's nine letters. Wow. And it means a piece of land that's surrounded on three sides by water. Oh. And Michigan is very famous for it. Oh, I for see. both of them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Bitcoin. That's right. Until next time, happy Michigan. Marco. Polo. <laughs> So, Michigan is very large. Was there something specific that you wanted to learn about? Did you know that the beautiful color of my feathers comes in large part from what I eat? I am very curious to know what kind of foodstuffs are grown locally so that I may think about inheritance my brilliant plumage. Perhaps some rich-hued fruit? Michigan does have a rich history of food and agriculture. Let's check in with a shark to learn more about this. Hey! 
It's a shark wandering around Michigan trying to find some snacks for Clarissa. Let's take a look at the ground to see if there's any shrimp or fish to munch on. What's this? A tiny dolphin brain? No, a shark. That's what humans call an apple. Thanks, Farmer Pete, whoever you are. And do humans often eat them? Well, sure. Have a bite. <laughs> Yum, that was delicious. And where does such a uh, apple come from? Are there more? Why, sure there are, a shark. In this special part of West Michigan, we're surrounded by apple trees. They grow easily in this fertile area called the Fruit Ridge. Wow. So, are you telling me that the Fruit Ridge was formed millions of years ago when glaciers pushed the land into gentle rolling hills, leaving behind clay loam soils with superior moisture holding qualities? And because of its proximity to Lake Michigan, provides a unique climate that is ideal for growing fruit and vegetables? That's exactly what I'm telling you. What a fruity wonderland, Farmer Pete. Well, Clarissa, it's an all-you-can-eat apple buffet over here on West Michigan's Fruit Ridge. curiosity being satisfied so far? Well, you've scratched the surface, but I'd like to know more. Hmm. Do you like guessing games? What is it? This delectable looking dish is a favorite of many Michiganders. We start with a steamed hot dog bun and add a grilled hot dog, some Detroit style chili, remember kids, no beans, and then top it all off with a greasy helping of yellow mustard and chopped onions. Use a fork if you want, but if you don't, make sure to have plenty of napkins on hand. Bon appetit! is confounding, dear. But anyway, did you know that my fellow flamingos and I are wading birds? In fact, it was the very sight of all that water that caused me to alight here in Michigan. What can you tell me about this abundance of water? You know, Clarissa, I'm pretty sure that Lauren is in the water right now. I think he'd be the perfect person to tell us more. Wow, it's a beautiful day out on the river today, Hazel. Absolutely. We're so lucky to have the Huron River running right through Ann Arbor. We really are. It's so fun to paddle the rapids near Argo Park and then just float on down the river here to Gallup. The air is fresh, the scenery is pretty, and if you keep your eyes out, there's plenty of wildlife to spot. Like muskrats. I'm glad you remembered them, Lauren. Also, many feathered friends like sandhill cranes, great egrets, and barred owls. And here at Gallup, there are swans, mallard ducks, and Canada geese. And I don't know if you've noticed, but you can also find another species here at Gallup Park today. Human beings, like you, Lauren. Yep, what have you observed about us humans, Hazel? Well, they can be messy at their picnics. Luckily, we squirrels are around to remind them to be tidy. Thank you for that, Hazel. Okay, back to the water. 
here in Michigan, we're lucky to be surrounded by great bodies of water as well as have lots of water inland. You probably know the names of our five great lakes. Yes, that's easy. The acronym HOMES helps me remember them. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. That's right. Here's a tricky question. Which of the Great Lakes does our Huron River empty into? Hmm, yes, that is a tricky one. It's Lake Erie. Correct as usual. Okay, Hazel, do you know which Great Lake doesn't border the state of Michigan? I've studied my geography. That's Lake Ontario. Correct again. Besides the Great Lakes that are bordering us, Michigan has more than 26,000 inland lakes and more than 120 major rivers flowing through it. Of course, we have to mention Tequamanon River Falls, Michigan's largest waterfalls, and the emerald waters of Kitchitikippi, Michigan's largest freshwater spring. Both are in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Cool! Meanwhile, down here in Southeast Michigan, I'm getting hungry. Let's head for shore. Okay, let's paddle on. Splendid! I have no trouble at all finding a lagoon or two in which to soak my ankles. And maybe some new feathered friends. I do wonder how Michigan came to have such a wealth of water. The answer to that, Clarissa, lies in the deep and distant past. Boy, Toby, uh, it's so beautiful out here. I'm so glad we got a chance to go camping. Me too, Otto. I'm really enjoying relaxing out here. I love hearing the birds and other animals walking around. Toby, um, what's that? I hear something rustling in the bushes over there. I don't know. What do you think it is? Oh, hey guys. It's Brian. Hey Brian, what are you doing out here? I was just looking for a good sit spot to watch some birds. Looks like you guys found a good one. Thanks for joining us at the campfire, Brian. Yeah, it's great to see you. Hey Brian, do you have any spooky stories or chilling tales you could tell us? Hmm, chilling tale, huh? Yeah, I know a chilling tale. And it happened right in this very spot ish do you want to hear it oh you bet i do brian go ahead all right <clears throat> once upon a time in a distant geologic epoch known as the ice age all of this land was covered for millions of square miles around by an enormous stretch of glacial ice what we call the Laurentide Ice Sheet. Over the course of some two and a half million years, this massive continental glacier carved and sculpted much of the features and geology of the lands we know today as Canada and the Northern United States, including right here in the land of Michigan. Its advances and retreats gave this land its famous shape, determined the composition of many of our soils, and excavated the Great Lakes basins, as well as thousands of other smaller lakes and waterways that this region is known for. Later in this era, megafauna like the mastodon and the woolly mammoth roam these lands, and their fossilized remains can still be found buried in the earth around these parts. In fact, in the fall of 2015, a local Chelsea farmer found the bones of a woolly mammoth in his fields just 10 miles southeast of Ann Arbor. It's thought that the remnants of this colossal ice retreated from the Lake Superior Basin only some 10,000 years ago. That's a long, 
long time for human beings and turtles, but in Earth time, that ain't nothing. And remnants of the ancient Laurentide can still be found to this very day in the glaciers on Baffin Island, high in the Canadian Arctic. Oh boy, Brian, that tale of the glaciers made me chilly just hearing it. Toby, do you think we can start a campfire? Absolutely, bud. I'll get right on it. Campfire, huh? Oh, that reminds me. I got something. Oh, what did you bring with you, Brian? A fossil or uh, something else really cool? Uh, well, it's just an old marshmallow I've been carrying around with me. It's kind of fossilized. No matter. Get a stick and throw that thing on the fire. How chilling. Well, now that we have the essentials covered, I'd love to learn more about what makes Michigan special. Little trinkets of information that tell me more about the culture. It's the Collie Dog. you know your way around a thesaurus. Speaking of learning from books. Hey Katie, check out this cool book all about Michigan. I love Michigan. That's where we live. Look, there's a whole section on Michigan say symbols. Wow, there's so many of them. Yeah, but it's almost lunchtime, so maybe we should just Read about some of them for now. Good idea, George. Let's start here with the robin. The robin is Michigan State Bird. It has been the state bird since 1931. Hey, how about this other animal? Michigan State Reptile is the Painted Turtle. I bet Otto loves this symbol. Yeah, we should ask him about it later. Okay. Here, look, Michigan State Fish, the brook trout. They can only live in cool, clean water and can be found in many of Michigan's lakes, rivers, and streams. Ooh, look at this pretty rock. Oh, I know that one. That's the Podosky Stone, Michigan State Stone. A Podosky is a fossil Colonial coral. These corals live in warm, shallow seas that covered Michigan during Devonian time, some oh, 350 million years ago. Wow! Potato stones are easily found on the beaches and inland streams of northern Michigan. Look, Michigan's first official state symbol was the Apple Blossom, designated as the official state flower in 1897. Michigan is known for the production of apples and Papyrus coronaria bloom on crab apple trees every spring. That sure is a pretty flower. And now I'm even more hungry. Me too. I hope we have apples. Let's read one more page and then eat. Hey, Katie. See, Quarius Peninsula Omanam Circumspice. What? It's the state motto in Latin. Huh, I don't know Latin. Here, let's read it the other way. 
If you seek a pleasant peninsula, look about you. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Hey, Katie, how about this one? If you seek lunch, look in the kitchen. Ha, <laughs> you're funny. Okay, let's go find some apples. Michigan seems like it could be a nice place to stay for a while. I'm especially enjoying these comfortable with irons. When I was flying over it, Michigan seemed to be so big. It is pretty big. Only 10 of the 50 states are bigger than Michigan in area. Another reason why it might look so big from above is that it's made up of two peninsulas separated by the Straits of Mackinac. It's the only state that's made of two peninsulas. Two peninsulas? Straits? Well, how fortunate that I can fly great distances so that I might easily get from one peninsula to the other. I do wonder how humans are able to make this crossing. Hmm. Who can we ask? I know. Let's check in with Allison. I bet she could answer this question. Hey, Clarissa. That's a really good question. Let's take a closer look. Michigan is the only state in the U.S. that is made up of two peninsulas, or pieces of land that are almost entirely surrounded by water. We call ours the Upper Peninsula and the Lower Peninsula, and the four mile long stretch of water between them are called the Straits of Mackinac. That's where our story takes place. It used to be incredibly hard to cross the Straits of Mackinac to get from one peninsula to the other. And in the 19th century, this area became a very important transport hub due to the exploitation of natural resources and an increase in tourism. But in 1923, the State Highway Department started ferry service. These large boats carried people, cars, and goods from one place to another. During the winter, the Straits of Mackinac freeze over. Railroad icebreakers were used during the cold months to break through massive ice flows. The ferry service was really popular, and every year, more and more people wanted to use the ferry service. In 1955, the ferry carried over 900,000 vehicles. The ferry service grew to be so popular that they quickly couldn't keep up with demand. Traffic backups could stretch as long as 16 miles. It proved that if you provided a connection between the peninsulas, people would use it. And so, it was decided, after many years of failed attempts, that Michigan would build a five-mile-long bridge to connect their peninsulas. Building the Mackinac Bridge was a lot of hard work. But after more than three years of construction, the Mackinac Bridge finally opened on November 1st, 1957. And when it opened, ferry service between Mackinac City and St. Ignace ended. The Mackinac Bridge remains the longest suspension bridge with two towers between anchorages in the Western Hemisphere. And it's currently the fifth longest suspension bridge in the world. And in 2009, the Mighty Mac celebrated its 150 millionth vehicle crossing. The Mackinac Bridge is an iconic marvel of engineering and a mighty symbol of innovation that all Michiganders can be proud of. As then Governor G. Menon Williams stated at the opening day ceremony for the Mackinac Bridge, Michigan at last is to be one state geographically, economically, and culturally. Where nature divided us, we have bound ourselves together with this web of steel. This mighty bridge, the world's greatest, is a symbol of our strength. Michigan is good. Michigan is good.
Um, Toby, are you hot by any chance? You know I am, Otto. I love summer, but some of these days can get real hot. Oh, well, that's okay. Maybe we should just go inside and cool down. I think that's a good idea, Otto. Let's go. <sighs> Toby, I thought it would be cooler in here. Yeah, me too, but uh, I guess not. Nope. Well, what should we do? There's got to be something we can do to cool off. Maybe we should go buy a fan. That might help. Well, whatever it is we do, we can't sit in the heat all day. All right, Otto, why don't you grab your hat and uh, we'll head out and search it cool. All right. You almost ready to go, Otto? Yeah, I'll be right there. All right, I'm waiting outside. We gotta get this guy cool off. Look, Otto, someone left a flyer on our door. There's a space heater sale down at the shop drop and roll. Should we get one? Toby, no, that won't make us any less hot. No, man, I was thinking like if we get a space heater and we get really hot, then we'll go all the way around from hot, hot, hot back to cold, right? Isn't that how refrigerators work? I don't know about refrigerators, but in reality, that plan will never work. Worth a shot. Let's keep going. Hey, Kashi, how you doing? Oh, hi, Christopher. I'm fine. <laughs> I see you made a list here. Oh, yeah. It says my favorite things to do in the summer. Yes. <laughs> do you want to tell us about it? I would love to. So do I, Kashi. And the second one is dig in the sand, which you can do at a beach, but you could even do it at a playground. <laughs> it's fun. And the third one says drink lemonade. It's so delicious. <sighs> <sighs> and the fourth one is to go tubing, which is very special and fun, and it definitely keeps you cool. And we're so lucky to have the Cascades right here in Ann Arbor. Yes, we are. And the last one is read a book under a tree with a cool breeze coming by you. Oh. I just love that. Kashi, you're cooling me down already. Oh, good. Well, listen, since we are talking all about summer, are we ready for our word of the day? Sure. Do you want to activate Lexi? Okay. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? Oh, yeah, I know that one. It says parasol. That's right. And a parasol is like an umbrella that we use to protect us from the sun. Right. Well, are you ready for the summer game code? I am. It's five letters. Okay. It has something to do with the sun. Good. And people often use this word when they're talking about power. Sometimes people say geothermal power or hydroelectric power. Well, this game code is mm power. Oh. And if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... That's right. Until next time, keep Hi. cool. <laughs> Look at all this water, Toby. I bet if we go swimming, we'll be able to cool off. Good idea, Otto, and that might work for you, but I didn't bring a swimsuit. You can't just... No, I'm not going swimming in my underwear. I'll be red-faced from embarrassment. 
Just a suggestion, big guy. Oh well, let's keep going. When my head overheats from too much theorizing, I like to divert myself with a little trip down the Cascades to cool off. Come on, I'll show you. A more mirthful afternoon I haven't spent in some time. So long. What is it? It's got numerical scales on both sides that don't match up and a glass tube in the middle with a red dye. What is it? Hey Toby, let's hang out under those awnings. The shade will protect us from the sun. I'm sure that will cool us off. A little bit. <sighs> Good idea, dude. Let's do it. <sighs> Toby, what is this place? I know this is the Ann Arbor Farmer's Market. All throughout the summer, farmers bring their fresh fruits and vegetables here to sell. Oh man, a nice juicy ripe strawberry would definitely cool me off right now. Well, too bad it's an off day. If I was a farmer, I don't think I'd have any fruit to sell. I'd probably eat it all before I could bring it here. You know, Toby, I've always wondered what it's like to be a farmer. Hello, Hazel here in a field north of town with my two friends, Angie and Mark, farmers who run Hindsight Farm. Hey, hello. So we squirrels are familiar with the idea of putting seeds in the ground. When do you do most of your planting? Garlic is the first thing we plant. We plant it the previous fall. Potatoes we plant in the spring. And then other things like onions, tomatoes, and melons we plant in the summer. Yeah, we start in the spring and keep planting pretty much into the summer and into the fall even. Very cool. So it looks like things are beginning to grow. That's right. It's early June and things are off to a great start. June marks the beginning of the peak growing season. We've got lots of light and heat to get things off to a roaring start. So Angie, what's growing right now? So this is our garlic, and right about now it starts to send up a flower shoot that you can actually pick and eat. It's called a garlic scape. And that's it, and this is the part you eat. Here's some radishes ready to harvest. Wow! And what will grow later in the summer? Oh man, a lot of stuff. Uh, Tomatoes, watermelons, cucumbers, basil, all kinds of yummy stuff. Mm, mm, mm. So here are some baby watermelons that we just planted. We put them in the, the trays uh, at the beginning of May and we'll probably get melons sometime in August. Last question. It's very hot in the summer. So how do you, as farmers, stay cool? Well, we wear hats to protect your faces from the sun. 
Yep, and after we're done working in the fields, we go swimming. Ooh, that sounds fun. Thank you very much, Angie and Mark. Thanks, Hazel, for coming to see the farm. Yeah, thanks for coming to check it out. Meanwhile, back in town, Lauren built space for a small garden in his backyard. That's right, Hazel. Summer means fresh homegrown salad greens. Mmm, mmm. Lauren, where's your hat? Oh, that's right, Hazel. Thanks. Mmm, mmm, mmm. found some shade here, Toby. Do you think there's any books that'll teach us how to keep cool? Maybe we can figure out how other animals keep themselves cool and try to replicate that. I know you're cold-blooded, so don't you just find somewhere cold to sit? Usually, although in the city there's not a lot of chilly spots in the middle of summer. And what about you, Toby? Don't you sweat to keep cool? Yep. Maybe a little too much. Well, what about Teddy? He's a smart fella. I bet he knows how to keep cool. Hi. As you might know, humans, like us, produce sweat when we become overheated. This is a very efficient mechanism by which the human body regulates its temperature when it's hot. We have sweat glands all over our bodies so that the cooling process takes place over a large surface area of the skin, which is great. What about dogs though? Do they sweat in the same way? Toby and Otto wanted me to ask Teddy, so I did. Let me tell you what he said. Ooh, it's hot. And unlike you humans, we dogs have very few sweat glands. Most of mine are on the bottom of my feet. That's why I sometimes leave behind wet footprints on Lucy's clean floors. That's just me sweating. The rest of me is covered with this insulating coat that keeps me warm in the winter and cool in the summer, but doesn't allow my skin to perspire. Here's what I usually do. I pant like this. Dogs rely on panting to control most of our temperature regulation. When dogs pant, we evaporate moisture from our tongues, nasal passages, and the lining of our lungs, cooling ourselves as air passes over the moist tissue. I'm also exchanging the hot air in my lungs with cooler air. This usually works pretty well, but sometimes when I get really hot, Lucy helps me out with a cool towel, some delicious crunchy ice cubes, or if I'm lucky, a dip in the pool. Stay cool. It's a thermometer. And the thermometer is telling us that it's very hot today. It's over 110 degrees Fahrenheit and over 40 degrees Celsius in the sun. Oh, it sure is warm this morning. It's a scorcher, all right. <sighs> it is so hot, you can call me a hot dog. Without the bun. <sighs> That's funny, George, but I'm almost too hot to live. I am too hot to even think. I kind of like it when it's hot because that means it's summer and I love having fun and the good old summertime. Katie, you always
always have such a positive attitude and I really appreciate that. George, let's dry our sweat, drink some water, and join Katie in something fun and summery. Mm -hmm. And cool. And cool. And I think I know just the thing. Oh, is it ice cream or napping in the air conditioning? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have ice cream or air conditioning, but we do have all the right stuff to make our own ice pops. Yum. Let's head inside and get making. We are making strawberry orange mango popsicles and we have everything we need right here. We have a cup of strawberries, a cup of frozen thawed mango, a cup of orange juice which we will actually cut in half and I'm using a popsicle mold to make things easy and a blender and you know what that means. Ask a grown up for help. Let's get blending. Last, it goes in the freezer for four hours. Banda, I think they are ready. Come on. Wow, those look so yummy. As Big Fred says, Bon Appetit! Toby, look at that sign. It says, want to get chilly? This way. Should we check it out? I'd love to be chilly right now, Otto. Let's go for it. A shark? What are you doing here? Ah, my first customers of the day. Um, we were looking for something chilly. That's what the sign said. Well, first of all, somebody needs to ring this bell. Welcome, gentlemen. It's time for chili. Um, a shark, are you sure selling hot chili on a hot day is the best business decision you can make? Well, it's food, so... Um, Shark, if we wanted a bowl of chili right now, could we take a hot one to go? You can have a can. Shark, what makes it six alarm chili? It's full of peppers and plankton and fire. Um, any fish in there? Of course, one large Stingray. Oh, um, do we have room for this, Toby? I mean, I guess we can take it home. Once we cool down, we could eat some of this six alarm chili. I see the can is lovely, but um, you don't have a bowl of chili that I could take with me? What more could you want than a nice, hot, steaming pile of chili in a can? All right, will do. Here, allow me. Well, thanks, Shark. I really hope your chili business works out. Oh, it will be just fab. Who serves chili on a hot day? Well, he is a shark. I guess so. But Otto, that gives me an idea. If we eat something hot, like chili on a hot day, it'll make us even more warm. So maybe what we need to do is find something cold to eat, like, like something sweet 
and creamy and you can hold it in your hand and it's delicious and cold and when you eat it you just feel so wonderfully refreshed toby i don't know what you're talking about but at this point i'm in then let's go bud when i feel sad and down on my luck nothing is right and i'm feeling stuck that's when i know no need to feel low i, I hear the, the bells, bells of the ice cream truck choice to be made when the truck stops strawberry shortcake or giant bump up couple of quarters and my last buck I hear the bells of the ice cream truck I have ice cream sandwiches and chocolate eclairs both will make me feel like I'm walking on air if that doesn't sound good maybe this sounds nice popsicles, fudgesicles and lemon ice I see snow cone and even drumsticks I can eat them real fast or just take a lick Choco taco And even push up I hear the bells of the ice cream truck Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed like there's something I'm forgetting to do. Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start. Oh, yeah. It's a Saturday show. 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 Hey Otto, do you want to go to the library with me? Oh, hey Toby. Um, I don't think I have any books to pick up. Why are you going? Uh, I just need to pick up some story time supplies. Do you want to ride along? Sure. Can I see your office and pick out some picture books? Books, yes. Office, I guess so. Why would you want to see my office? I don't know. Isn't that where you spent most of your time before I got here? Kind of. I mean, when I was at the library. I didn't live there, though. Are you ready to go? Yep, I'll grab my book bag. And Toby, can you introduce the word of the day? Sure can, OT. Is everybody ready for Kashi and Christopher and the word of the day? And so we were on the train for three days, and when we got to the end, they couldn't find our luggage. But in the end, they actually did, and so it was a great train trip. Wow. Did you like my story? I really liked your story. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, oh. Oh, Christopher. Yeah. You know, I like trains. Oh, so that's great, Christopher, but do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you know, I had a pet goat when I was a little kid. Oh, I like goats. Um, but Christopher, do you have any questions about um, my story? I like yellow. Oh, so a question is when you ask me something about my story that you want to know more about. Wanna oh, try again? Oh, oh, I do. Yeah, I, I think I got it this time. When did your story take place? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> this was two years ago. Wow, that's great. You know, we are talking all about questions in this issue. We are. <laughs> Not an issue. This in... isn't a book. <laughs> it's not a magazine. In this <laughs> episode of The Saturday Show. Kashi, would you like to activate Lexi? Oh, yes! <laughs> well, 
let's see what it says. Kashi, can you read this? Well, I'm good at sounding things out. It says interrogative, but I don't know what that means. That's right. Interrogative is another word for a question. Oh. That's right. Listen, are you ready for the summer game code? Yay, summer! Okay, here it is. It's three letters. Wow! That's not very many, Kashi. No! And it's a question word, but it's not a WH question word. Oh! So if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Hey, <laughs> That's right! An exclamation! <laughs> See you next time! Bye. Is this where you park, Toby? Is this where you get in the library, Toby? Do you have special VIP access? Oh, what is this? Look at all of this! What is this stuff? Hmm... Oh, is this your office, Toby? <sighs> I've got to gather some stuff up here, Otto. Do you want to go pick out your picture books? Yeah, I think so. Although I'm still waiting on some answers. But which way are the picture books? They're over in the corner near the garden. Are you going to need any help? Nope, I can get them myself. When you're done, will you meet me out there? Will do, Otto. All right. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Hi, Otto. I'm good. How are you today? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm looking for some good picture books to read. Do you know any good ones? Otto, do you know how much I love picture books? Um, maybe not exactly, but, uh, what would you recommend today? Hmm, I know a lot of good picture books. We've got some right over here. Would you like to take a look with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my! Thank you for the assistance! The shelves were getting pretty tight in there. Um, who are you? Yeah, who are you? I like you two already. Questions galore! Yeah, but like, who are you? How did you get here? Do you live in the library? What were you doing on the shelf? I, young turtle, am Wanda W. Wonder. Asking questions is my game. And also, answering questions, I do that too. Hmm, I don't get it. Have you ever been asked by a grown-up to stop asking so many questions? Well, I'm here to say that today's your day, and we are going to ask a way. We're gonna ask who? How many minutes in a day? Who is the tallest person? When is the next full moon? What do worms eat? Why is the sky blue? Where are my pants? Ask
Why? Why? Anybody? Why? Do you know why? Do you know who? When? Anybody? When does this song end? Anybody? This is too much. I feel like I'm in an alternate dimension. Where are we? One of the first five W questions right off the bat. How serendipitous. Where are we, you ask? Where? Then you say where, else in werewolf. I said where, as in a place or setting. Isn't werewolf spelled differently? <laughs> uh, it is, but where and where sound so much alike, which is why I am here. By the way, where am I? Questions, questions, questions. Otto, you can answer this one. Um, I suppose so. Mr. Werewolf, we are at the downtown library in the picture book section. Have you never been here before? Uh, I've been here and there. Where, whereabouts did you say we were? The downtown library. Didn't you hear me? The library? What, what, what sorts of things go on here? The library is a wonderful place for inquisitive souls like yourself, Mr. Werewolf. There's answers galore. Where? Why? In books and songs, stories and crafts. The library is a source of infinite answers. All you have to do is Ask. Then you say books? I did indeed. Well, where would a werewolf like myself find where books? Where books? Perhaps you'd like a book about maps or Michigan or Ann Arbor or libraries. Oh, could I take home all four? Absolutely! Here we go! Thank you so much. Huh. Now, where should I read these books? Well, we figured out where. I do hope the werewolf enjoys those books. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but Wanda, what are you doing here? Another W question. What is it? Um, well, I'm not sure what it is. It's got buttons. It's got sliders. There's knobs you can turn and places to plug in. Hmm, what is it? Otto, this is a mixing board outside of its case. You would plug instruments and microphones in up here. You can change the volume down here. You can mute or solo different tracks and instruments with these buttons and make the sound different by turning these knobs. It's something that DJ Mars would use when making music. And that's what it is. Okay, Wanda, you're here to help us ask and answer questions. Are we? Asking the right ones? 
Who? Who? Who's asking questions? Who? Hello, Alfred. Hello, Vanta. How are you today? Wonderful, as always. You two know each other? Of course we do. No one asks more questions than Sir Alfred Hoover. I just came back from visiting my friends at the Leslie Science Center. Did you see Brian? He was going there on a field trip. My friends did say they had an appointment for an interview. Perhaps they're one and the same. Hey folks, we're here at the Leslie Science and Nature Center. We're joined today by David. David, thank you so much for being with us here today. And we're joined by another very special guest here who I would love to know more about. So I have some questions for you. My first question, who is this wonderful creature? Yep, so this is the barred owl. You may have guessed it was an owl already by all the features that you see. One of the big primary characteristics that people see right away with owls are these huge eyeballs. So we knew it was an owl, but it's a very specific, special kind of owl called a barred owl. B-A-R-R-E-D, barred. And that's because of these bars or stripes you see on his belly. And that helps him camouflage in his habitat. And what do they like to eat? Barred owls are one of my favorite owls to talk about food because barred owls will eat almost anything. They're kind of like the garbage disposal of the owl world. So most owls will all eat a little furry animals like mice and voles and ro uh, other rodents. Totally going to eat that for sure, barred owls will. But they also love to hunt around a little bit of water. So you'll see them sometimes eating stuff like crayfish. When are barred owls most active? So you may have heard this already, but owls are known to be nocturnal. And that's primarily nocturnal, mostly nocturnal, right? Uh, there are some owls that are active during the daytime, but most of them are active at night while we're sleeping. Where is a barred owl's natural habitat? Yes, so this barred owl would be found in deep woodlands. So deciduous forests with a bunch of trees and to cover them up and help them camouflage. Now, you're going to find them in the United States, on the eastern half of the United States, all over the place. But they've also started moving into the Pacific Northwest uh, region of the United States and up into Canada. Lastly, why are barred owls so important to their ecosystems? So it's important for us to remember that nature is about balance. And that means that we need all kinds of different animals and plants. The biggest thing we need to remember is to make sure that we protect the homes of animals and that protects the animals themselves. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us here today and for teaching us more about barred owls. I can't wait to learn even more about them and about all the other amazing creatures here at the Leslie Science and Nature Center. So, That's great, thanks for having me. We'll see you soon. Okay, Wanda, I have a question for you. Why do some questions go unanswered? Like, what's with all those weird things in Toby's office? Well, Otto, why is one of the most open-ended questions there is? But you are getting the hang of this. Another W question. Why? Hey, it's a shark. As inquisitive humans, you're likely often wondering, why? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. It's because... First of all, this light switch goes on and off. Then, water boils. And then, the way this tree bark feels. Then, this cable gets plugged in. And then, you play the slots. And then, the toilet flushes. Then, 
This kitty cat sniffs me. Then, this sandwich. Then, this car horn honking. Well, then last, but most important, this finger bends. And that's why. Well, that was fun. Wanda, how long are you going to be here? As long as I'm needed. By my calculations, there's only one W question left. I wonder when Toby is going to be done. I hope he doesn't miss all of this awesomeness. Otto, my friend, you found the last one. One! Did you know that you don't need a clock to tell time? With just a few simple household instruments, like a paper plate, a pencil, a straw, and a compass, if you have one. Oh, and the sun. You're gonna need the sun. That's pretty important. With those objects, you can make the oldest known instrument for telling time, the sundial. If they are correctly placed, sundials can be used to tell time accurately down to the minute. So why don't you gather those supplies we talked about? Plus a ruler might be handy, and I like to have a little ball of clay or fun tack to hold your straw in place. First, you want to find the center of your plate. And once you have marked the center, you are going to use the sharp end of your pencil to carefully poke a hole into the center of the plate. And then you will put the straw into the hole so that it's sticking straight up. You can put the little piece of clay on the bottom if you want to hold the straw. You are gonna use a ruler, and you can take the straw out to do this part. Use a ruler to draw a straight line from the hole to the top of the plate. And then at the other end of this straight line, you are going to write the number 12 along the edge of your plate. This number 12 is going to anchor the rest of your clock. Just before noon, you're gonna to wanna to take your sundial outside and use your compass to find north. I used the compass on my phone, so I placed a rock where north was. And then you are going to put the line with the 12 on the top facing north. You'll see that the sunlight is making a different line with the straw, and that is where noon is. So right at 12 o'clock, Slide your plate around so that the line with the 12 is lined up by the line made from the straw. The straw, in this case, is acting as the gnomon, which is the pointer on a sundial. And the sundial stays in place. The gnomon's shadow changes position as the sun moves through the sky over the course of the day. Come out every hour throughout the afternoon and use the gnomon's shadow to mark each hour on the plate. You'll have to return in the morning to mark the remaining hours on the other side of noon, for example, 10 and 11 a.m. Then your sundial will be ready to tell time whenever the sun is out. Your sundial will tell time using the sunlight. Just like the hour hand moves around a clock face and points to the current hour, sundial shows the current hour with a shadow. It's interesting to note where the lines are drawn on your plate. It doesn't always look exactly like a clock. Well, it was wonderful to meet you all. There are more questions to be asked, but I have answers to give elsewhere. Until next time, my friends.
Hey, Amanda. Hey, Otto. Otto, did you get your books? Are you ready to go? Toby, you're never gonna believe what just happened. Friday night took care of my weekday blues. I woke up at breakfast and read the news. I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do. Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start. Oh, yeah. It's a Saturday show. 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 Bugs? And friends. What a beautiful day, Fred. I'm so glad you joined us out here camping. Sure enough, Toby. I needed to take a little vacation. Some time off does a bullfrog good. I agree. I wonder where Otto went, though. You guys, you guys, you guys, come here. You gotta see this. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine, but come here and look at this. All right, Otto, this better be good. You guys got to see this anthill. It's so cool. Wait, Otto, you like bugs? Yeah, bugs and insects are really awesome. They're great to have around. I have to agree. I love snacking on flies, but I also believe that bugs do a lot of good. Hmm, I don't know. These ants are so cool. See the network of tunnels they dug? How ingenious. Well, I don't really mind bugs. I just don't really want to be their best friend. Oh, Toby, come on. I bet if we ask the crew to tell us more about bugs that you'll be comfortable in no time. Is that what we're gonna do for today's show? You betcha, bud. First, let's send it out to the crew for the word of the day. Hey, Allison, how you doing? Good, how are you? Oh, great. You know, I was going to film Word of the Day here, but Kashi's out of town at the seaside. Oh, how nice. Could you help me with that? Oh, definitely. Great. Well, you know, we're talking all about bugs in, the oh. <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> and I was wondering what kind of bug you would be, if you could be anything. Huh. What kind of bug I would be? Yeah. Hmm. I would like to be a bumblebee, because they're fuzzy and they're cute. And they go, what would you be? I think I would like to be a pill bug because they love to eat the strawberries in my garden. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, do you want to do the word of the day with me? Yeah, that'd great. be great. All right. Boop. Well, let's see what it says. Huh, antenna? Right, antenna. You know what antennas are? <laughs> That's right. Some people call them feelers and they help an insect learn about its environment. Yeah, they can sense touch and smell and taste. That's right, and sometimes even different chemicals. Wow. Well, are you ready to do the summer game code? Yeah, sounds fun. Okay, here it is. Why don't you tell us how many letters it is? It is six letters. That's right. And this word means a kind of silky casing for insect eggs to hatch in. And it's also a very famous Ron Howard movie. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big points. That's right. <laughs> Well, good luck and we'll see you next time. Bye.
Otto, I'm not sure that made me any more comfortable. Well, if that didn't melt your heart, then the story of Ernest the Slug will. Ernest the Slug? Yes, my friend. Listen closely to the tale of Ernest the Slug. Hi, I'm Jackie, and I love bugs, worms, slugs, and all invertebrates. I'm here to tell the story of Ernest, the very lucky, very adventurous slug. One rainy fall day in 2020, my friend Ellie sent me a picture of a creature she found living on her new house plant. I told her it was a slug, so Ellie released it outside. But later that afternoon, I saw another picture and I realized this slug was different. It had come from the greenhouse where the plant was raised. I was worried the slug wouldn't survive outdoors in Michigan. I did some research and I learned that this species of slug is found farther south in the United States in a warm and humid climate. I told Ellie the bad news. A few hours later, Ellie and I and our two husbands searched Ellie's big garden. It was raining and the Michigan slugs were out and about. Just as I was ready to give up, I lifted a piece of bark and there was a slug from the greenhouse. I decided to name him Ernest. Michigan was too cold for Ernest to live outside. I wanted him to live in a warm house and enjoy the rest of his life in comfort with lots of fresh veggies and clean places to hide. But I soon learned that Ernest had other plans. Ernest moved into my home in October and he settled right in. At first he stayed in a temporary enclosure without much space to roam. I fed him many different foods to learn what he liked the most and I bought him a tiny fairy house to sleep in during the day because slugs don't like to be in the sunlight. Ernest was soon thriving on a plentiful healthy diet. Before long, he found himself upgraded to a spacious slug mansion. Ernest loved cucumber, spirulina, mushrooms, and green beans. He woke up every night around 10 p.m., ate a big dinner and roamed his mansion, then returned to sleep inside his fairy house before the sun came up. Sometimes he enjoyed his cucumber so much he slept in it. Ernest celebrated the holidays with our family, but shortly after the new year, he had a surprise for all of us. One night while I was cleaning, I found tiny clear orbs buried under the soil. Ernest had laid eggs. Soon, newly hatched slugs, which are colorless and smaller than a grain of rice, would be sharing Ernest's home. I was so excited about the babies, and yet I was sad because I knew this meant that Ernest and his family needed a more appropriate habitat. By the end of April, Ernest's babies were almost half of their adult size. The slugs liked to sleep together, so they would pick one fairy house and squeeze into it, but I knew they would soon outgrow their space. I planned a trip to take Ernest and his babies where it is warm and humid so they could live outdoors. I found a spot where his species was documented by biologists, and then I used citizen science maps to learn where they had been sighted. On May 6th, my husband and I, Ernest, and a bucket of baby slugs drove to a forest near the Appalachian Mountains. We hiked until we found a safe spot where other slugs had been recorded. I settled the slugs under a big rock amid fallen trees, left one more meal of cucumber, and tucked them in to sleep until the sun went down. I like to imagine the slugs did what they did every night. Ernest and the babies woke up around 10 p.m. They ate a big dinner and they roamed, but this time they found a whole forest to explore with the promise of adventure ahead. And instead of going back to sleep inside their fairy house, the slugs would find a nice spot in a rotten log, snuggle up with each other like they always did, and go to sleep as the sun came up. And that's the story of Ernest, the very lucky, very adventurous slug. What do you call a bossy pill bug? Give up? A controlly bully. Okay, Otto, that one got me. I think I'm ready to learn a little bit more about bugs, but how do we go about doing that? We could go bug hunting. Bug hunting? 
Yeah, bug hunting. You see, most bugs are itty bitty, but if we sharpen our senses, look carefully, and listen a little bit, we can find some awesome bugs right around here. Fred's right. I bet if we look really carefully, we can find some really cool bugs. What do you say, Toby? I like it. Let's go. Uh, Katie, what are you doing with all those bugs inside the house? Oh, George, they're not alive. Amanda was cleaning up her closet and she found her old insect collection. In the house? Yeah. In the closet? Yeah. But why, Katie? That's bugs. She has these from when she was studying to be a science teacher. Oh, well, I guess that is kind of cool. So we can see and study them up close and not get stung or have them crawl all over the couch. Yeah. Guess what I think too. I mean, look how pretty they are. Some are so big. I think my favorite is the monarch butterfly. I like how she has so many cicadas. Yeah, this is really cool. We should ask Mana to keep these out so we can spend time figuring out what they all are. There's so many. I like that idea. And you know Manda will say yes. She loves it when we spend time learning together. She does. Hey, let's go find a snack and find Manda and ask her about these bugs. Okay, let's do it. What is it? This appears to be a really big piece of wood, like the trunk of a tree. But what are those grooves? They go back and forth and all over the wood. They're not very deep, but they're everywhere. What are they? I saw the most attractive and in love spider couple the other day. They were walking arm in arm. In arm, in arm, in arm, in arm, in arm, in arm. In that bug hunt was a lot of fun, Toby. Do you want to show everyone what kind of bugs we found? I sure can, Otto. Okay, so here's what we found on our bug hunt. This one looks like flying pocket lint, but it's actually an alder aphid, in its flying form, of course. This is an orchard spider. It's got great colors, green and yellow, and it's shiny. Oh, and we got to see it catch an ant that fell off the cabin. Here's some ants. They're brownish colored. There are so many types of ants that it's hard to figure out which kind these are unless you had them under a microscope. Still pretty cool. This dude is a Neandra beetle, the not so long longhorn beetle. It was the biggest bug we found on our hunt. Fred wanted me to pick him up and move him, but I said no way. This is the horned Pasilis. Sometimes he's called the patent leather beetle because his body looks like shiny leather. He was chill. And these little fellas are common pill bugs, AKA roly polies. I think they're my new favorite bug. That sure was fun, but uh, Otto, what if I didn't have any bugs around and I wanted to attract them? What do I do then? Are you trying to attract them to eat them, Fred? Yeah, I mean, not just to look at. Well, Lucy can show us one way that you can make a bug hotel. Check it out. Lucy, dear, you were so kind to invite me to your home. I was wondering if we had room for any other winged creatures. Well, Clarissa, who did you have in mind? Well, as you know, bugs of all types 
play an important part in our ecosystem. And I would love to provide an inviting habitat for them. What if we created an inviting space for them outside the home? That way they could sort of come and go like, like a bug hotel. A bug hotel? That sounds like quite a resplendent urban dwelling for our crawling, flying, and buzzing friends. I know, and easy to make. Let me show you what we need to get started. The first step is to gather all sorts of natural materials from outside to provide interesting spaces in your hotel. Things that bugs near you enjoy, such as bark and twigs, moss, bamboo, pine cones, exciting spaces to crawl in. Like this? That's exactly right. Then look around your house for something to be the hotel, like an empty plastic bottle, or a milk carton, a clay jar, an empty can, anything that can hold all the exciting natural materials that you found. Before you start assembling your bug hotel, you wanna make sure your container is clean and dry, and then get started filling it however you like. Think about what would be fun for bugs. There is no right or wrong. It might take a while, to see how you can get all your pieces to fit in there. It's sort of like a puzzle. Once you've created a hotel that you like, put it somewhere outside like your garden, yard, or balcony. Check on it in a few days to see if anyone has moved in. These grooves were left by the larva of the emerald ash borer. Emerald ash borers are an invasive species of bug that were first found in Michigan in 2002. The larva dig themselves into the bark of ash trees and eat, making it hard for the trees to move water and nutrients. These logs covered in grooves lived where the Traverwood Branch Library now stands, and when the library was built, the ash trees were incorporated into the library itself. How cool. That's what it is. Hey folks, I'm here at Bluebird Meadows in Mayberry State Park. It's one of my favorite places in the world to be on a muggy summer's evening because at nightfall here, the air comes alive and literally sparkles with thousands of fireflies. This is a perfect spot for them because there's a lot of tall grasses, bushes, trees for them to take shelter in during the day. And when they come out at night, there's not much other light to compete with. There is also a nice green froggy bog just through these woods behind me and fireflies love marshy woodland edges like this one. It's kind of hard to capture just how many there are here at night, so trust me when I say this is something you're going to want to experience for yourself to really see how truly beautiful it is. And just like all beautiful things in this world, there's some very cool science behind it. Fireflies are also known as lightning bugs or glowworms, but they're actually a type of beetle, and they display a fascinating trait of nature called bioluminescence, which means something like life lighting up. In other words, they can make their own light. This in itself is unusual for a land-dwelling species. Most bioluminescent species on Earth live in the dark depths of the ocean, where other natural light can't reach. Another unusual aspect of bioluminescence is what the Greek philosopher Aristotle referred to as its cold light, because unlike most other forms of light production, these little life lamps create practically no heat in the process, making this a nearly 100% efficient form of energy conversion. How are they able to do this? Through a controlled chemical reaction in their bodies, the combination of oxygen and a mix of certain types of molecules and enzymes that are common to all known bioluminescent life forms. 
These reactions occur in photocyte cells in their abdomens and are the source of that lovely green-yellow glow. There are about 2,000 different species of fireflies all over the world, and each different species has its own distinct pattern to its flashes, a specific signal it uses as a blinking beacon in the night to find and communicate with other fireflies of the same species. So this light show is not only beautiful, it's also an important evolutionary development that's crucial to their survival. And to see it, sometimes all you need to do is turn off your lights and step outside. Hey, I got a joke for you. Okay, what is it? Um, what, what do you call? What is a bee chew? Oh, I don't know. And now, please enjoy this B-roll. So, Toby, do you feel more comfortable about bugs? About how they work and how important they are to every ecosystem? I sure am, Otto. Thanks to you and Fred, my worries about bugs have disappeared. That's really great, Toby. It sure is. All right, come on, you two. I think I saw a butterfly go that way. Well, that's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our bug adventure. If you'd like more info, you can go to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. And if you'd like to drop us a line, you can email tss at aadl.org. Until next time. Are you guys coming or what? Keep on buzzing. Bye. Friday night took care of my weekday blues. I woke up at breakfast and read the news. I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do. Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start. Oh, yeah. It's the Saturday show. 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 This is so cool, Toby. Look at all this stuff. It is cool, dude. Do you want to go look at some records? Oh, that one. Okay, we can get it. Hey, Toby, check this out. How about this, Otto? Can you see me? You know, Toby, trying on these clothes gives me an idea. Oh yeah, what's that? We should get the crew together and have a real live fashion show. That'd make a good episode. Plus, it'd be really, really fun. Yeah, we can have music and a runway and lights and all that jazz. It'll be the show of the century. Love it, dude. Here, why don't you introduce the word of the day and I'll call the crew. All right, everybody, stay tuned for the word of the day. Hi, Clarissa. I was just walking by and wondering what you were doing. Is that Lexi? How did... Lexi? Yes, Christopher and Kashi asked me to do the word of the day. Likely due to my fashionable plumage. But I'm not sure how to make Lexi work. Oh, okay. I think I can help. There should be something on the side. This? Uh, 
I'd say you got it. Do you know what it says? It says couture, which means, oh yes, couture from the French, meaning the business of designing, making, and selling fashionable custom-made clothing or the designers and establishments engaged in couture or it can also be used to describe the clothes created by couture. So essentially high-end and fancy fashion? Exactly. Okay, now it's time for our summer game code. It has six letters and it starts with the last letter of the alphabet. It's used to close and open bags or pockets or other parts of clothing. And it has teeth. So if you think you know the answer, go to play.aadl.org for big points. Okay, Otto, the crew's getting ready for the fashion show. Did you decide what you're gonna wear? Not yet, Toby. I've got some ideas from the thrift shop, but I could use some more inspiration. Inspiration, huh? Well, why don't we check out what the rest of the team is doing? Maybe that'll give you some good ideas. Sounds good. Oh, hey, Amanda. Oh, hey, George. Um, you look different. Why are you so dressed up? I decided to wear as much denim as I possibly could today. What? What's denim? Well, it's... it's what I'm wearing. You mean jeans? Yeah, blue jeans are made of denim fabric. Oh, hey, Katie. Hey, what's going on? A denim party? And no one told me? George, I was just coming to show you my new denim vest and to give you these new blue jeans Amanda got you. For me? Wow, I love them. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, let me go put them on. Katie, I can't wait to see him in his new pants. He's going to look so nice. Ta-da! You can call me Blue Jean George. You look amazing, George. Levi Strauss would be so proud. What? You mean the guy whose name is on my pants? Are these his old pants? <laughs> no, 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 no. Levi's is the name brand of the pants you're wearing, of your blue jeans. You seem confused. Let's take a moment to look at just what Levi Strauss has to do with denim. The name Levi Strauss is pretty synonymous with jeans, as Levi's is one of the most popular brands of blue jeans today. In 1852, Levi Strauss opened a dry goods company in San Francisco. While working, he noticed a need for durable clothing for working folks to wear. He and Taylor Jacob Davis combined copper rivet reinforcements with tough denim leading to the first manufactured waist overalls in 1873. We now call them blue jeans, and the rest is history. Wow, I had no idea. What a cool guy making such cool pants. George, do you want to know why we are so dressed up? Yes, please. Otto is having a fashion show and we get to be in it. That sounds fun. I'm so glad I got new blue jeans for it.
Why did the baseball fan glue shoes all over his house? Hmm, why? Because he wanted to make his home run. <laughs> what is it? Well, it kind of looks like a sewing machine. It's got spools of thread and knobs that you can turn, a needle there. But uh, I know for a fact it's not a sewing machine. What is it? Did that give you any ideas? Oh yeah, I think I've got a couple ideas. What are you going to wear, Toby? I think I'll leave it a surprise. <laughs> I bet it's gonna be really good. I hope so. Well, if you're almost ready, I'll pack the truck up and we can get going. Sounds good, Toby. A short history of fashion. Chris pleats, tight belts, padded doublets, Lego mutton sleeves were also some of the important features of Gothic clothing in the late Gothic period which ran between the 15th and 16th century. Jewels, pearls, gold lace, and techniques such as slashing and puffing were often used during the 14th and 17th century which is known as the Renaissance period. Volume, floral, lace, and sophisticated colors was exemplary in the Biedermeyer period, which ran from 1815 to 1848. The dresses were lively, tons of fabric, wrinkles and folds. They even got their unflattering nickname, ham sleeves, due to their shape as a piece of ham. The straight skirt was the dominant shape of the 1920s, but flaring skirts were also in fashion. Men wore well-tailored pinstripe suits, tuxedos, silk shirts, handkerchiefs, fedora hats, suspenders, bow ties, and black patent leather shoes. The 1960s brought bright colors, plaid patterns, bright florals, oversized bows, miniskirts, and knee-high boots. 1970s popular styles included bell-bottom pants, braid jeans, miniskirts, maxi dresses, tie-dye peasant blouses, and ponchos. The 1980s were a decade of bold style and colors. It was the decade of neon stretch pants, ripped tights, biker jackets, polished oversized blazers, and poof skirts. One of the many popular styles of the 1990s was the preppy style, which included khakis, navy blue blazers, oxford shirts, and brogue shoes. Which one is your favorite? Otto Turtle here, and this is Turtle on the Street. Today we're going to be asking regular folks about their fashion. Excuse me, miss. I noticed your beautiful earrings. Can you tell me more? Oh, these. These are my firecracker earrings. Handmade by me. Look. Are earrings in for puppet fashion these days? If you got ears, I say wear them with pride. Oh, well, I don't have ears, but thanks for the advice. Excuse me, sir, sir, sir. Can you tell me more about your hat? <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Hats are always in. And uh, this one will protect me from the rain. It's 
it's it's gonna rain, right? Um, I don't think so. Anyways, good luck. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I just love your sunglasses. Can you tell me more? Oh, well, thank you for noticing. These are a pair of extra large sunglasses. They are hot pink and I was inspired by Elton John to vamp up my accessories, especially eyeglasses. So here we are. Do they protect your eyes from the sun as well as look really good? Well, more of the latter. I just look good. I agree, sharp as ever. <laughs> you guys gotta see this magnificent dress. Excuse me. You just gotta tell me about that dress. Oh, this, this is my prairie dress. They're in fashion now. And uh, I love gardens and flowers. So I've got flowers all over my dress. Excellent. Well, folks, we found out what puppet fashions are in. This has been Otto Turtle for Turtle on the Street. Bye. Hey, Sally. Wanna hear a joke? Oh, uh, okay. What's the opposite of irony? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wrinkly! <laughs> <laughs>
Christopher in Horses and Pineapples. Is that in this year? A true work of art, Otto. I agree. Oh, yeah, and the kick to finish it off. Such a beautiful, beautiful job. She's back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Amanda and George, clad in denim, head to toe. I know you don't wear a lot of denim, but what do you think about George's pants? Oh, just because I don't wear it doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it. Absolutely. Those pants are Levi Strauss, and any minor 49er would be jealous of that outfit. Here's Allison giving Fred a hand down the aisle. He's got sunglasses, a nice watch, and what's his shirt say? Fashion. Oh, fashion. Perfect. Here comes Toby. He's carrying Tasha, who's wearing a beautiful pink scarf, a tiara, perfect for any occasion. And is that a rose-colored handbag? I believe it is. Trey Chic. Trey, Trey Chic. Well, everybody, that's it for the inaugural TSS Fashion Show. We saw a lot of great fashions, and everybody wore their clothes with confidence. I'd like to thank Brianna for being here, a true fashion icon. Thank you so much, Otto. Oh, it was wonderful to have you. And uh, everybody at home, please give the fashionistas a big round of applause. Until next time, this is Otto Turtle signing off. Bye! Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby? The uh, show's about to start. Oh, yeah. It's a Saturday show. 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 Hobbies. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday Show, AADL TV's one and only Saturday morning kids variety show. My name is Toby, and I'm Otto. And today we're. Oh, don't mind me, fellas. I'm not in your way, am I? Not at all, Fred. Is everything okay, though? Oh, yeah. And today we're... Actually, yeah, I do have a question. What's your question, Fred? I was wondering if you guys had any hobbies. Hobbies? Yeah, hobbies. Like, do you guys have things you enjoy doing when you've got time for yourself? I do, Fred, and I think Otto does, too. Yeah, Toby likes to do woodworking, and recently I've taken up bird watching. It's a great hobby to have when I'm laying around on a log. That sounds pretty cool. Would you like us to help you find a hobby, Fred? I don't mean to take up all your time. It looks like you're doing your show. That's okay, Fred. I'm sure the crew will be more than happy to help out. That'd be great, Otto. I'm really happy with my job, and I've been spending more time with Tasha. But a guy can only spend so much time by the creek. I'd like to try out something new. Don't worry, Fred. We've got you. I'll make some calls and... And I'll introduce the word of the day. Up next is Kashi and Christopher with the word of the day. Hey, Kashi, how is your trip from the seaside? Wow, it was great! Thanks for asking! <laughs> I see you've got something here. What is it? Oh, yeah, I was just doing a little bit of knitting. Oh! Those are knitting needles. Wow! Uh, you must really like knitting. I do. It's really fun. I make scarves sometimes. Well, what a great hobby. It is. 
You know, we are talking all about hobbies today, and the new issue of Philately Quarterly came in, and I'm really excited to show you some of my stamps. Wow! Do you want to take a look at them? Do you have a stamp collection? I do. These are all stamps from the Soviet Union from the 80s. Wow! Aren't they awesome and beautiful? They're beautiful! Right! Kashi, do you have any other hobbies? Yeah, I'm learning how to do carving. Oh, Kashi, did you carve this? Well, no, not really, because that's very professional, but it is carved. Somebody carved it. Wow. I'm, I'm going to like, I'd like to learn how. Wow, carving is so cool. Man, you know, Kashi, people have had all kinds of different hobbies through the years. Have you ever heard of CB radios? Um, yeah. <laughs> breaker, breaker, breaker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but I know what you're talking about. I don't even really know what to say anymore. <laughs> and you know, people used to race slot cars. I used to do that when I was a kid. Wow. Are you ready for the word of the day? Okay. All right. Do you want to activate Lexi? Sure. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? Uh, not exactly. <laughs> well, it says numismatics, oh. and that is the study of coins and coin collecting. Oh. That's a great hobby. That's fun. Well, Kashi, are you ready for the summer game code? Oh, yeah. Okay, here it is. It is seven letters, and it's a compound word, and it's a kind of old-style photography. Hmm. The first word is like a needle, but it's not a needle, and the second word means a small opening or like a tear in something. Wow, that's really complicated. <laughs> Well, if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... <laughs> and welcome back again, Kashi. Oh, thanks. It's well... great to be back. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I really appreciate you guys helping me out. Don't worry, Fred. We'll find you a hobby. Guys, I'm on the phone. I can't hear anything while you're talking. So, anyways, chicken, we were trying to find Fred a new hobby. Do you have one? Oh, really? That sounds awesome. It'll give you exercise, it's low cost, and it sounds like a ton of fun. You're going out today? Do you think you could show us how that works? Great, we'll check back with you soon. Thanks, chicken. Bye. Okay, so chicken is putting something together for us. But while we wait, why don't we just jump into it? What do you mean, Otto? Well, I think the best way to find a hobby is to try out a couple hobbies. So let's go. Well, where are we going? Just trust me, Toby. Oh, hey, Mandia. I was looking for you. Um. George wants a snack and he's making a mess in the kitchen. Okay, Katie. <laughs> sure. Let me just finish weeding the garden and we'll head inside and make something. You know, maybe we should pick one of these uh, nice big green tomatoes. <gasps> we can make our first fried green tomatoes of the season. Oh, wow. That sounds yummy. 
You are growing so many things in this big garden. Hey, what's that? Is that a weed picker? Yep, it's a weeder. It pulls up the root of the weed too. Pretty handy. Oh, wow. You have a lot of tools. Can, can you have a garden without all this stuff? Well, I guess you could, but some of these really help get the job done. I mean, I can do without the weeder, but you really need a shovel once you get started. I like how some hobbies need special things to help keep you safe or to make it a better experience. Yep, I totally agree. One thing I can't forget when I head out to the garden is my hat. To keep the sun off my head on a hot day like today. That's so smart. Manda, you're a good gardener. Hey, how are, how are these tomatoes looking? They are looking good, all right. Why don't we pick a nice green tomato and head inside and get cooking? Oh boy, you know, I think George's best hobby is snacking. <laughs> I think you're right. This instrument entered production in 1968. It consists of a metal keyboard made out of a printed circuit board and is played by touching it with a stylus or pen. Over three million of these were sold as children toys. What is it? Sadly, I've had to give up my hobby of clock eating. It was getting to be too time consuming. Okay, so I've got this list of hobbies here. I figure we can just go through it and try as many as we can. First up is flower arranging. Flower arranging? Yeah, as far as I know, you go around your yard and pick flowers and then put them in a vase. Uh, then what do you do? Uh, I suppose you just look at them. You know I'm up for anything. Let's try it. I'll leave these ones for the bees. Here's one. These yellow flowers are pretty pretty. This one might be good. Some more ground flowers. How nice. These little pepper flowers could be nice. These ones could use a little love. That was cool, but I don't really see myself doing this a whole lot. Okay, well, the next one on the list is meditation. Meditation, but... Yep. It says here that meditation is a way to train attention and awareness, yada, 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 to achieve calmness. Why not? I could use a little bit more calm in my life. Is 
Fred asleep? Hey, um, uh, Fred? Fred? Huh? I guess that was pretty relaxing, but I don't know if I did it right. Is it supposed to feel like you're asleep? Um, not sure. Guys, I think we should move on to another one. What's next on the list, Otto? All right, let me see. Hey, it's a shark here to talk to you about my favorite hobby, shredding flesh. I mean, singing. Singing is a useful tool for making beautiful noises come out of your throat in the form of notes and melodies. Today, I'm going to give you a quick and easy tutorial on how to properly sing like me, a shark. Let's start with the best and most popular note of all time, A, as in a shark. Simply place your face on the A note of a piano or keyboard and match it with your voice. Sing along with me. Uh, that sounded spectacular. Now on to B, as in buffet. And of course, C, as in the C. Uh, hmm, that didn't sound quite as flawless as the first two notes. Let's try it on a different instrument. Yes, yes, much better. Now you're starting to sound almost as good as me. Finally, you'll want to add some rhythm to your melody. You can easily emulate any percussion instrument with the same mouth you use to sing notes. Ha cha 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 cha. Congratulations! You, my protege, are now a world-class singer. Go find your friends and your family and serenade them with your new favorite hobby. And be sure to remind them that your mentor is me, a shark. Our hobby is reading. And it doesn't cost anything. Just a library card. What is it? It's the stylophone.
You know, Otto, walking is a hobby. It was a great idea. I never thought about it like that before. I would just walk to the creek and stop. I never thought about keeping going. You bet, Fred. Walking is really good for you. And you get to see a lot of things that you wouldn't see driving in a car. Yeah, you see a lot of stuff. Like, that kind of looks like Brian over there. Hey, Fred. Hey, Brian! What are you doing out here? Just practicing my shot so I can be better at basketball. What are you up to? Well, I'm trying to find a hobby. That looks like fun. Can I play? Yeah, of course, dude. Here you go. All right. Here we go. Wait. I just remembered I've never played basketball before. How do you do it? Oh, here, Fred, I'll show you. First, you set your feet. Then, make a relaxed grip with your fingertips. Focus on a spot towards the back of the net. And be sure to follow through. Oh, okay. Uh, like this? I can't do it. That's okay, Fred. It's your first try. It takes a lot of time and practice to learn a new skill. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to do it. It's these arms. Hmm. That gives me an idea, Fred. You're a frog, right? Is a bog green? Take a look at these powerful legs. Exactly. And frogs are great jumpers, right? Absolutely. I've got mad hops, as the kids say. There's pretty much nothing I do better, except for maybe catching flies. Well, what if you tried using your hops to your advantage? Bet you can dunk it. Oh, yeah. Here, let me try it. Whoa, awesome. Come on, Fred, show me your moves. Nice one, but I think you just found something you're really good at. If you keep practicing, you could be great. Ah, uh, gee, I'm having a lot of fun and all, but uh, I guess I'm still a little confused. It sounds like work. I am getting sweaty, but it feels like I'm just playing around. And I'm supposed to be finding a hobby, and I don't know what that should feel like. Ah. Uh. Well, like what hobbies is like... kind of a mix of both. It usually does involve a lot of work over time, but it's kind of thing you do just because you love doing it. So sometimes it can feel like you're just playing around, and that's okay. Hobby is just something you love doing so much, it can make the work of it feel like fun. Huh, I guess that's true. Thanks for the point, is Brian. Sure thing, Fred. Thanks for playing, bud. Good luck on your quest. All right, Fred, you ready to try the next hobby? This time, it's stamp collecting. Actually, Otto, you did help me. I think I found a new hobby. I'm going to stick around here and play some hoops. Do you want us to wait for you, Fred? No, nah, no need to wait. I think I'm going to be here for a while. All right, Fred. Have fun. I just love that guy. Friday night took care of my weekday blues. I woke up at breakfast and read the news. I'm 
feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the, uh, show's about to start Oh yeah, it's a Saturday show 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 it's a Saturday show. It's a Saturday show. It's a Saturday show. Hey, Otto. What you doing? Oh, I'm just making a birthday card. A birthday card? Whose birthday is it? Is it Fred's birthday? Did we miss Fred's birthday? Nope. Guess again. Is it, uh, is it your birthday, Otto? You never told me when your birthday was. Nope, it's for the Saturday show. A birthday card for the show? Yep, the Saturday show is almost one and a half years old, so I thought we'd celebrate. Wow, I didn't even realize it's been that long. How are we gonna celebrate? I asked Fred to make a cake, and I thought we'd reminisce. Reminisce? Yep, I thought we'd look back at all the awesome times we've had on the show. That sounds good, and I know exactly where to start. Do you remember our first episode? Otto, um, I understand you had a very long journey to get here. Uh, would you like to tell the folks about it? Sure, but... Um... I think I'd like to do it with a uh, song. Well, I, I don't know if we've got time for that. DJ Marsupial, kick that beat. I was dropped in a box down in Kentucky. The scenery there is oh so lovely. Thoroughbred horses with manes like silk. And if you're thirsty, the state beverage is milk. That's true, you know. Then I found myself in Cincinnati. I had traveled for days. I was feeling crabby. I ordered up food to get me ready, but they served me my chili on top of spaghetti. It's not for everyone. I made it to Detroit, but my trip wasn't through. Michigan is pretty, Indiana is too. I headed out south down US 24 and ended up at the Indiana State House door. What would you go to Indiana for? In Indy, I only had one task. I swam up the White River, ended up at the track. My time at the brickyard was a real blast. I hopped in a race car and went real fast. And then I came back here to do the show with you. So you drove all the way to Indianapolis just to drive a race car? I'm a turtle, Toby. We don't always have opportunities to go fast. That song still holds up, bud. It does. And you can tell how shy I was back then. What a trip. Hey, fellas. What are you two up to? Just reminiscing. Oh, about what? A Hawaiian vacation? That time we went fossil hunting in Siberia? That time we took the train to Idaho? No, about the Saturday show. Do you remember the first time you came to Toby's house, Fred? Yeah, I think I do. Wasn't I just supposed to come for a visit? Yeah, I think that was the case. Well, I'm glad I stayed. Knock, knock. Oh boy, Big Fred, you're here. So good to see you. Come in, come in. Oh, hey there, Otto. Uh, how you doing there, bud? It's so good to see you. I don't know, I'm really digging your accommodations. This place is great. Are you enjoying yourself? Thanks, Fred. I've really been enjoying the time I've spent here. Well, aren't you going to introduce me to your family? Well, my mom's doing pretty good, and Uncle Testudo's always got a story to tell. No, no, no. I'm not talking about them. I know them. I'm talking about your new family. You know, I never really thought of it that way, but I guess you're right. All right, come on. Let's go see what Toby's up to. Yeah. I'm glad you stayed too, Fred. You got yourself a job. Yeah, as Otto's personal chef.
And you found yourself a hobby. I'm a certified basketball nut. And you made some new friends. Yep. Tasha and Amanda and Katie and Allison and Lauren and Christopher to name a few. Speaking of, I'm late to meet Tasha at the creek, so I'm out of here. See you later, fellas. We do have a lot of friends that contribute to the Saturday show, don't we, Otto? We do. The TSS crew is amazing. We've learned so much and had so much fun. My favorite part about our team is just how adventurous they are. Was that shark chasing chicken a shark? Um, it was a shark, but I don't know if it was a shark. A shark is great. Remember when he sold us some of his chili? Yeah, I think I have that can somewhere around here, but I really dig a shark's music. Do you remember when he sang all the digits of pie? Hey, it's a shark. I'm here to teach you about the never-ending number of pi. Are you ready? Okay, sing along. Go! 3.14159265358979. Three, We're well into this episode, and we don't have a word of the day yet. Oh, that's because Kashi and Christopher are on vacation this week. Did they go to the seaside again? Not sure, but wherever they are, they're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I'm being, I'm being a metronome. Tick, tock. That's something you do with music, too, sometimes. Tick, tock, metronome. <laughs> you laughing a lot, Christopher. <laughs> oh, hi, Christopher. Hi, Kashi. How you doing? I'm great. What do you have here? Well, I have a collection of collected items that are all having to do with jobs. Oh, wow. Like yeah. what? Like tools. Like, okay, so there's a hammer. If you were a builder or an architect, you would use a hammer. Right. If you're a cook or a chef, you might use a whisk. 
Not in your ear! Oh, 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 oh my goodness! <laughs> hey, Kashi, how you doing? Oh, great! I'm building with my colorful blocks! Wow, those sure are colorful. I love it. And you know we're talking all about colors in this episode. Oh, yeah, I have a, a joke for you. Uh-oh, uh -oh, oh, I'm ready. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? Uh, I don't know. A carrot! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Kashi. Do you know any jokes? Uh, well, I do know a joke about color. Are you ready? Okay. What's green and smells like blue paint? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> green paint. What? <laughs> That's silly. Gotcha. I can never get enough of those two. Here, Toby, I made a word of the day. It means to indulge in enjoyable recollection of past events. So the word of the day is reminisce, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're reminiscing. Yeah, and since we've got a word of the day, we might as well have a what is it too, right? Today, we are looking at an idea. We're gonna watch something happen and figure out what it is. So I have a jar here and two arrows, the top one facing left and the bottom one facing right. The jar is about six inches in front of those arrows. And I am going to slowly pour some water into the jar. Watch what happens to the arrows. See that? The bottom arrow is going the other way, and the top arrow switched to point right. What happened? What is it? It's water refraction. Refraction is the bending of light, and any time that light passes from one transparent thing into another, it refracts or bends. So when we poured water into the jar, it bent the light to make the arrows look like they were moving or switching places. That was my favorite what is it of the whole series so far. Yeah, Lucy and Clarissa are great. I bet they get along really well with Tasha. You know what they say, birds of a feather. You know, Toby, one of my favorite parts of the show has been the special guests we've had. Oh yeah, there's a ton of good ones. Well, 
I'm almost done with my birthday card here. Is there anything else you'd like to reminisce about? I think we did a pretty good job of looking back at everything, but there's no way we can fit it all in one episode. Oh, I know. Which is why we should make a movie. A movie? Like a, a real movie? What would that even be about? Oh, I've got a few ideas. You want to share them with me? Sure, but we should leave the people with something to jam to. DJ Mars, hit it! I know Turtle. Toby Z and DJ Mars. Yeah. I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds and I weed my garden. I grow food then I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. Yeah, I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds and I weed my garden. I grow food and I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. My favorite flower is a daisy and mine is a pansy. We love all gardens from simple to fancy. Gardens outside or gardens indoors. You can do anything you like because the garden is yours. I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds and I weed my garden. I grow food, then I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. Yeah, I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds, then I weed my garden. I grow food, then I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. I like growing veggies because they're also delicious. Not to mention that they are also nutritious. Greens and beets, green beans and peas. If you put them on my plate, I'll eat all of these. I like growing flowers because they're oh so pretty. A little bit of nature in the middle of the city. Watch colors explode all over the place. Or take them in your house and put them in a vase. I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds, then I weed my garden. I grow food, then I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. I love to spend the day in my garden. I plant seeds, then I weed my garden. I grow food, then I eat my garden. I love anything to do with my garden. Yeah. Otto Turtle. Toby Z, DJ Mars. See you in the garden. See you in the garden. Well, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time right here on The Saturday Show. Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start Oh yeah It's a Saturday show It's a Saturday show it's a Saturday show. 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 Science. Everybody and welcome to the Saturday show. My name is Otto and today I'm here with our trusted friend Professor Encephalon. Hello Otto. Today's episode is all about science so I thought Professor you could help us out with a science experiment. And Otto, what better place to do it than in the secret lab? Oh, of course. So, what are we getting into today? 
Otto, have you ever heard of a volcano? Uh, heard of them? Yep. Uh, seen one? Yep, but that's a story for another day. Can you tell me more, Professor? I certainly can. A volcano is an eruption in the crust of a planetary mass object like the Earth that allows lava, volcanic ash, and gases to escape from an underground magma chamber. Um, okay. Well, Otto, you see, a volcano lets lava erupt on the surface of the Earth from time to time. I see. It's like a mountain that spits fire. Ooh, are we going to see a volcano today? <laughs> well, unfortunately not, but I have arranged an emulation of an eruption. I wonder what this is going to be like. <laughs> yes, Otto. Sounds awesome. That looks so cool, Professor. We're going to make this volcano explode? Indeed. All right. But before we get too much further, I think we should go to Kachi and Christopher for the word of the day. Um, but speaking of, have you ever met Kachi or Christopher? No, I don't think I have. Hey, Kashi, what do you think's wrong with the old car? Gosh, I don't know. Wow, I wish we could figure it out. But, you know, there's so much science in here. Oh, I know. I was just thinking that <laughs> you've got motors and chemistry and electricity. But don't ever go looking around inside a car without a grown-up like that. That's right. And, you know, this is practically a rolling science experiment. You know, we are talking all about science in this episode of The Saturday Show. That's right. And I wondered if Lexi's got something for us. Oh, let's find out. Use science. I'll press the button. Well, let's see what it says. What's that say, Kashi? Oh, I know this one. Hypothesis. That's right. It does say hypothesis. A hypothesis is kind of a working assumption when you're doing an experiment. And then you can decide whether you're right or wrong. That's right. And are you ready for the summer game code? I am. I hear this time it's a short one. <laughs> it is, Kashi. It's only four letters. Okay. And it means the information that you collect. It could be from an experiment or something else. And it's also the name of a very famous Star Trek character. Oh, I love Star Trek. <laughs> so if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big points! That's right! Until next time... Bye! We've got to get back to fixing this car. Yeah! <laughs> okay, Professor... Are we ready to start our experiment? We certainly are, Otto. We've got vinegar, baking soda, and plenty of paper towel to clean up this mess. Ooh, we're going to make a mess? <laughs> Indeed. Uh... Do you have to get that, Professor? Yes. Yes? Hmm. Yes? Oh, dear. I wonder what that's all about. Okay. I understand. I'll be there right away. Otto, I'm so sorry to have to do this, but we have a science emergency and I'm required immediately. Well, I am disappointed, but whatever that science emergency is sounds more important. 
Well, nothing's really more important than learning, Otto, but I think you've got this on your own. Thank you. See you later, Professor. So long. Okay, well, uh, why don't we see what everyone else is doing, and in the meantime, I'll try and get this volcano to work. Hi. I was just sitting here with Teddy asleep in my lap, and I was thinking about this amazing group of scientists that I want to tell you about. They all have one thing in common, and it's really cool. You want to know what it is? They're all animals. I bet you know what Velcro is. It's so cool and useful, but did you know that it was invented by a dog named Milka? Well, on vacation one day in 1941, Swiss engineer and inventor George de Mistral decided to take his dog Milka for a walk in the Jura Mountains in Switzerland. Milka returned from the trip covered in prickly burrs from a burdock plant. Annoyed but intrigued at how sticky these burrs were, de Mistral decided to look at one under a microscope. And guess what he found? Little hooks that gave him the idea for Velcro. Have you ever seen a hummingbird darting in and out of flowers? This tiny creature has inspired science and technology as the average hummingbird beats its wings about 53 times per second. Researchers have studied how hummingbirds use their wings to hover in the hopes of being able to use this technology to build better helicopters. Here's an animal scientist that's slightly larger than a hummingbird. This is a humpback whale, and humpback whale's fins have been studied and modeled for wind turbines because of their turbicles, which are bumps found on the front of their fins. These bumps grip the water and help the huge whales use their fins to maneuver in small circles and around tight corners at any speed. Researchers have found that a similar design on the blade of a wind turbine helps with efficiency. And speaking of the ocean, don't forget, you know, I think I know someone who's better suited to tell you about this. Hey, it's a shark. My lovely, delicate skin is essentially like sandpaper covered with minuscule V-shaped scales called dermal denticles, which means tiny skin teeth. These little Vs keep microorganisms from attaching to my body and help me glide quickly and gracefully through the water, pretty much exactly like an aquatic ballerina. Inspired by me, a shark, the Navy has developed a material known as Sharklet, which wouldn't have been my first choice of a name, based on the skin pattern to help inhibit marine growth on ships. It optimizes vessel performance and reduces fuel costs, allowing the Navy to install yummy, all-you-can-eat seafood buffets in every ship galley yum yum. Well, there you have it. Amazing animal scientists. Maybe Teddy's dreaming about becoming a scientist too. Hey, Teddy. Check out all the different kinds of sciences there are. Wow, that's a big book. What, what, what kinds are there? Okay, let me see. There is acoustics, aeronautics, anatomy, anthropology, archaeology, astronomy, astrophysics, bacteriology, biochemistry, biology, botany, ooh, plants, uh, cardiology, cartography, chemistry, cosmology, crystallography, ecology, embryology, endocrinology, entomology, enzymology, whoa, 
That's a lot of allergies. Um, forestry, genetics, geography, geology, geophysics, hermitology, hydrology, <sighs> ichthyology, immunology, lepidopterology. Oh, that's, that's the study of butterflies, like the monarch. Wow. Let's read more. Hello, everyone. We just spoke with our friend Emmy, who's been observing butterflies all summer with her family, just like a scientist. Let's watch the interview. Hi, Emmy. How are you today? Good. You've studied butterflies all summer, but before they become butterflies, what are they? Caterpillars, right! And where do you find caterpillars? Milkweed. They're milkweed plants. Why? Why do you think they love milkweed so well? Because because it's their favorite food. Oh, okay. Wow! You can really see those baby caterpillars are hungry and eating right through that milkweed leaf. Caterpillars don't stay small for long. These older caterpillars are still munching away, growing, growing, growing. What happens after they grow? What are these up here? Chrysalises. Chrysalises. So is that where they, they turn into butterflies? The caterpillar on the right is getting ready to build its cozy chrysalis. What a remarkable transformation. Goodbye, caterpillar. Hello, butterfly. Oh, wow. Now, Emmy, you probably know that there are scientists out in the world who study butterflies. Have you ever heard the term lepidopterologist? No. You haven't? You know, you're an amateur lepidopterologist because a lepidopterologist studies butterflies. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Well, Emmy, thanks for showing us your butterflies today and talking to us. Welcome. Want to know more about butterflies? Check these books out from your library. Okay, welcome back everybody. I've been looking over these volcano instructions, but haven't quite figured it out yet. It, uh, it says here that this is an endothermic reaction. Um, I'm, um, I'm an ectotherm, which means that uh, it has something to do with uh, temperature. So, uh, I need another minute. Right! Let's do this thing! We're gonna have a science party today! Hooray! We're gonna have a science party today! Okay! The food that I eat turns me feathers pink! That's science! I put all the ingredients in there and out comes the perfect pie! That's science! I flush the toilet and all the water spins round clockwise! That's science! The drops in the window keep on growing, innit? That's science! We're gonna have a science party today! Hooray! We're gonna have a science party today! Well, okay! I drink three cans of fizz and then I got a burn. That's science! I open the truck and it drives me to the library again. That's science! Light from the sun bounces off me noggin so you can see colours. That's science! I add up peppers to be filled and it feels like my mouth is on fire. That's science! We're gonna have a science party today. Hooray! We're gonna have a science party today. Okay! We're gonna have a science party today! Hooray! And we're gonna have a big science party today! Okay!
What is it? This skull is a member of various extinct groups of predatory mammals that are characterized by long, curved-shaped canine teeth, which stick from out from the mouth when closed. They have been found almost worldwide from 42 million years ago up to 11,000 years ago. What is it? Spotlight on the Mariana Trench. You might be familiar with the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, or even the very broad and deep Grand Canyon in the American West. But the deepest point of Earth's geography lies in the Western Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench. At over six miles deep at its deepest point, the Mariana Trench runs about 1,500 miles from north to south between the countries of Japan and Papua New Guinea. It was first measured in 1875 by scientists who dropped a weighted rope off the edge of their boat. Other scientific expeditions, some in submarines, have been conducted since then, revealing new plant and animal species such as snailfish, giant single-celled amoebas, and a bottom made of diatomaceous ooze. While it's not a place you can easily visit, the Mariana Trench provides an awesome scientific mystery that will be sure to be studied for years to come. Hey Otto, there you are. What are you doing? Oh, oh uh... I was down here doing some experiments with Professor Encephalon, but he had to go on a science emergency. Oh. Well, what experiment are you doing? We were supposed to make this volcano erupt. That sounds cool. I think I remember this one from, like, some old TV shows. So, do you know how to do it? Maybe. I can help you try. Okay, Toby. I really want to see this work. Okay, well, it says here that uh, the first thing we need to add is baking soda, so... But we want a big reaction, right? Oh, yeah! And we should add some more. Biology, linguistics, mechanics, medicine, meteorology, meteor, metrology, microbiology, mineralogy, mycology, neurology, nucleonics, nutrition, oceanography. Oh, a shark. I bet he knows that one. Oncology, optics, paleontology. Oh, that's like dinosaurs that dig up bones. I like digging up bones. Maybe I can be a paleontologist. Wow. Okay. What is it? It's a saber-toothed cat. Ology, pathology, petrology, pharmacology, physics, physiology, more ologies. Uh, psychology, radiology, robotics, seismology, spectroscopy, systematics, oh, a big one, thermodynamics, oh, toxicology, virology, volcanology, volcanology, uh, zoology, oh, Zoology, yes, that's zoo animals. Katie, we should visit the zoo with Amanda. You wanna?
Katie? Katie? Hey, where you go? Katie! You missed some sciences! Come back! I can read them again! Katie? Katie? Speaking of zoology, welcome to the Detroit Zoo. Situated on 125 acres and home to 2,400 animals. Let's go check it out. The Detroit Zoo first opened its doors in 1928, almost 100 years ago. Since then, it has grown to be a leader in protecting and preserving animal species. The Detroit Zoo makes use of naturalistic habitats. That means that instead of big cages, the enclosures for the animals resemble the animals' natural habitats in the wild. In fact, the Detroit Zoo was the first zoo in America with cageless exhibits for their animals. These days, the Detroit Zoo features one of the largest polar bear exhibits in the world and the largest penguin enclosure in the world. Today, we're visiting the animals at the Detroit Zoo, where you never know who you'll find hanging around. Zoology is the study of animals. Scientists who work in this field are called zoologists. They study all kinds of different animals. Some zoologists examine animals' bodies and how they live. They may answer questions about how the animals behave, how their bodies work, or how they live in their environment. They observe the animals and take note of how they sleep, what they eat, I wonder if they know Otto. How they stay cool. And how they interact with other animals. Many zoologists are also concerned with conservation. Conservation is the protection of things found in nature. People who care about conservation try to preserve natural resources so they will still be around in the future. The Detroit Zoological Society is a nonprofit organization that operates the Detroit Zoo. They support conservation in many ways and help species including endangered Carner blue butterflies, Great Lakes piping plover, common terns, and even Blanding's turtles. Zoology is a very important science, and the Detroit Zoo works hard to preserve and protect animals within the zoo, locally, and globally. To find out more about zoology, or to learn more about the Detroit Zoo's sustainability and conservation efforts, visit aadl.org slash The Saturday Show. All right, Otto, I got my science apron on, so I match you. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. Whoa!
Why, George, I think you've got it. Games. Hey Otto, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing there, Otto? Hey guys, I'm training. Training for what? I didn't tell you, I'm training for the 44th Annual Wetland Games. Uh, no, you didn't tell me. The Wetland Games? Is that coming up? I must have missed my invitation. Our invitations came last week. I must have forgot to tell you, but it's today, so you better get your stuff ready. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't seen the rest of the family in a hot minute. Wait, 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 wait. Can one of you guys explain what's going on? I'd be happy to, Toby. Welcome to the Fat Desk. I'm Otto Turtle. The Wetland Games are the pinnacle of amphibian and reptile competition. Every year, the best of the best gather and compete in a series of events to determine who gets to take home the coveted golden fish. There's the long jump, the 10 meter dash, the catch of the day, and the log sitting competition. Those are the facts. I'm Otto Turtle. Uh, it's our family reunion, big guy. We make food and have fun playing some games. It's a great time. You should come, Toby. Yeah, Toby, you should come so you can see me beat my Uncle Testudo at the log sitting competition. But you'll have to excuse me. I've got a little bit more training to do. Is it just me, or is Otto taking this really seriously? Oh no, you're absolutely right. Otto really wants to beat Testudo at log sitting. You see, there's been some accusations regarding Testudo's win streak. Some people think he plays the game, uh, a little unfairly. He cheats? Well, not exactly, but maybe. Either way, Otto is determined to take home the golden fish this year. Okay, well, I guess I'm up for anything. Do you have to get some stuff together before we go? Yeah, I'm gonna bring a new dish of mine to share. Wanna help me with that? Sure, Fred. I was just about ready for roll the dice. Hi, Christopher. Oh, hey, Kashi, how you doing? I'm great, wow, you have quite a setup here. I do. Let me present the Cows of Dunshire, a brand new gaming experience. Wow. Eight to 12 players, two wizards, a maverick, an urbiter, two warriors, a corporal, an ombudsman, and a ledgerman. Now, the ledgerman is really cool, basically keeps score, but gets to wear this cool hat. You're now, making me tired, Oh, well, gosh, you to hold on. The amazing thing about this game is the challenge play. Oh, but first, let me tell you about the cards because you'll need to understand roadblocks. Oh, never mind. Oh. So, the amazing thing about the challenge play is it's basically the whole game in reverse. Christopher, <laughs> can we just play something a little more easy? Sure, Kashi. How about, say, backgammon? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. 
Well, listen, you know, we're talking all about games in this episode. Oh. Shall we see if Lexi has something for us? Okay. All right, here we go. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? It says Senate. That's right. Senate is one of the world's oldest board games. And although we don't really know what the rules were, it seems to involve moving pieces around a board. Oh. Now, let's get to our summer game code. It might apply for next summer. We'll have to find out. But here it is, Kashi. Okay. It's five letters. Five letters. It's the name of a fictional island, hmm. and it's also the name of a game that came out in the 90s that really pioneered the modern board game experience. It's extremely popular, hmm. and some people call it Settlers. Oh, so I think I know what it I'll is. I'll bet you do. And if you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... That's right. We'll see you next time. Bye. All right, fellas, you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. You really are focused, aren't you, Otto? I am, Toby. I don't know if you knew this about me, but I can get pretty competitive. That's fine, bud, but uh, just don't let it get out of hand. Don't worry, Toby. We'll be just fine. Plus, you get to meet all our family. They're all going to be there. Alrighty then. Off we go. <laughs> Well, there's two of them. They're less than an inch tall, wide, and around. There's many sides to them, and there's numbers in all different sides. Huh. What is it? Welcome, welcome, one and all, to the magical land of Yum! As we continue our quest to explore the five realms of flavor and restore balance to Princess Pamplemousse's precariously unbalanced breakfast. Before we begin, though, a very special thanks to Chicken for conjuring up another batch of his famous guacamole. What a great idea! Oh, that's good. That's good. Now, as you'll remember, we've gathered all the golden mushrooms from the umami forest, squeezed the sour lemon of justice, brewed the bitter cosmic coffee, and tasted the soft small pretzel of time. Now we're finally ready to enter the Marshmallow King's lair beneath the old abandoned fudgery, where lies the broken blender of destinies. Someone must have been hungry when they wrote this campaign. Oh, now I'm hungry. My tummy is growing. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we can take a snack break. Focus, focus, my friends. Beneath the sweet, fluffy exterior lies.
lies our most dangerous dungeon yet. Now, John, uh, excuse me, Rupert, you. I'm not Rupert. I'm Basil P. Crumpet, gentlemen abroad. Last week, you were Rupert P. Rhubarb. Gentlemen abroad. Yeah, and before that, it was Quincy P. Corfellow. Gentlemen abroad, yes, as a world-renowned man of mystery, it is essential that I remain incognito. Very well, Basil. You have the Kiwi Key that you stole off the Tapioca Troll's belt. We use that to open the secret entrance into the dreaded Fortress of Fudge. But what's this? A group of fearsome fudglings stands ready for us. Oh dear me, resistance is futile. It would seem the Marshmallow King was privy to our secret plans. It would seem that one among us is a bad apple. Everybody, hello. 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 Toby, I'd like you to meet Archibald. Hello, Othello. Hello, Esmeralda. Hello, 
Francis with an E. Hello. Francis with an I. Hello. Frankie D. Hi. Omar. Testudo. Hi. And Little Fred. Well, it's very nice to meet everybody. See, Toby, that's the golden fish. That's what I'm after. Well, just remember to play by the rules, Otto. You'll do just fine. Hello, Otto. Hello, Testudo. You ready for the games today? Oh, I am. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna have my pre-game meal. See you out on the field. Don't worry, Otto. You've trained as much as you could for this. You'll be great. Yeah, I think you'll do good, Otto. But uh, I'm hungry, so let's get some grub. If you guess dice, you're correct. There are many different kinds, and this one is a 20-sided die. In geometry, an icosahedron is a polyhedron with 20 faces. A number of polyhedral dice have survived from the Hellenistic and Roman periods, usually from ancient Egypt. Ancient die were made from bone, wood, or rock. Today, they are made of plastic and are quite popular. The 20-sided die is most familiar with role-playing gamers. The die became commercially available in the early 1970s and is the signature die of the Dungeons & Dragons game. A 20-sided die, that's what it is. Good everybody, and welcome to the 44th Annual Wetland Games! I'm John P. Walrus, I'll be calling the action today, and uh, what we have today here is a family affair! Members of Otto Turtle's family are going to compete in a series event to see who gets to take home the coveted Golden Fish! If everybody's ready, let the games begin! First up, a challenge of speed. It's the one meter dash. Competing today, we have Otto Turtle, Esmeralda, Omar, and Testudo. And they're off! Otto Turtle jumps out to a lead, but here comes Esmeralda in lane two. Can she take it? I don't know. Let's stay tuned to find out. Uh-oh, Omar's making a little bit of progress, and Testudo's a little lagging behind, but as they cross the finish line, it's Esmeralda! Yeah! Oh, how wonderful! Great job, Mom! Great job, Mom! Great job, good job, Mom! Good job, Mom! Well, folks, the results are in from the Catch of the Day competition. Competitors Little Fred, Francis with an I, and Frankie D did their best. Let's see the results. In third place, it's Frankie D. In second place, it's Francis with an I, which means that the first place and biggest catch of the day goes to Little Fred. Everybody give Little Fred a round of applause. Here we are at the start of the long jump competition. All frogs today, no surprise. Let's see how they fare. And today's long jump champion is 
Francis with an E. All right, folks, it all comes down to this. The final competition, log sitting. Competing today are two finalists, Testudo and Otto Turtle. Let's send it into the field for the action. That was a lot of fun, guys, and Otto, you gotta be pretty proud of yourself. You bet, Toby. I train really hard, and I accomplished my goal of winning the log sitting competition. Well, it was really nice to meet your family. We had fun, the food was good, but uh, who did win the golden fish? Yeah, come to think of it, I didn't get to see the trophy presentation. Oh. It went to someone that deserved it the most. <laughs> Live from beautiful downtown Ann Arbor, it's TSS Action News with Auto Turtle and Toby Person. Important news delivered by a turtle and a person. Boy, that was a dramatic intro, Otto. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to TSS Action News. That's right, TSS Action News. Not to be confused with TSS Action Snooze, which is what I'll be doing later today. <laughs> I've seen this guy nap, and let me tell you, it is action packed. I'm Toby. And I'm Otto Turtle. And we'll start with today's top story. Breaking news? More like record breaking news. We'll throw it out to our field reporter, George E. Boy, who's with a local feline who's attempting to break a world record. George? Thank you, Otto. This is George E. Boy, local news dog. TSS Section News, reporting live from the home of Katie Kitty with a breaking news story. Word on the street is that she is attempting to break the record for saying the word meow the most times consecutively. I'm here with a Manda, who hopefully can tell us more. Manda? Yeah. Hey, George. It's great to be here. What is going on with all that meowing? What's she doing? So the other morning, Katie exclaimed that she had a great idea. She said that she was looking through the Earth's Book of Big Records and she wanted to be in the book for something. Then she had the idea that she could meow the most times and set the record. And well, she hasn't stopped meowing. Wow, Manda, this has been very interesting. I was hoping we could talk to Katie Kitty today, but that would interrupt her flow. Meow, 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 meow. She just won't stop meowing. Hey, Manda, do you know if she made any special preparations for today's great feat? Yes. The, the morning that she started meowing, she gargled with sardine water, she found a comfy spot to sit, and then she just started meowing. That was two days ago. It, it's getting pretty loud. 
Well, folks, you heard it here first. Local feline Katie Kitty has been meowing for two days straight. Wow, this really is some big news. I mean, news. Hopefully, we can catch up with Katie Kitty after she breaks that record. Otto, I'm gonna throw it back to you. This is George E. Boy, local news dog, TSS Action News, signing off. What a fascinating story. Thank you, George and Manda. Toby, have you ever tried to break a world record? Nope. Dynamite drop in, Toby. Anyways, we at TSS Action News are committed to serving the public. And what better way to do so than learning a new word? Kashi and Christopher, take it away! Thanks, Toby. We are coming to you live from the compost pile where we have very exciting news. Kashi, do you want to tell us what's going on? Yes, I do. Well, we have something growing in the compost pile that is my favorite vegetable. And what's that, Kashi? A delicata squash. Delicata? What's that? It's a beautiful squash that's yellow with stripes, but that's not all. <laughs> what else? I did not even plant it. <laughs> it is growing out of the compost pile by itself. Well, that is very exciting news, and we're going to take a look in just a moment. But first, I think we've got to get to our summer game code. Are you ready, Kashi? I am. Okay, here it is. It is six letters, and it's a person who is very important in the newsroom. Mm. It's also a famous part of a sailing ship. Mm. And when you want to keep your ship still, you drop it to the bottom. Okay. All right. And I think that Lexi's got something for us. Okay. Hit it, Lexi. Well, let's see what it says. Kashi, can you read this? It says muckraker. That's right. It does say muckraker. And a muckraker was a journalist who exposed political and economic corruption in the early 1900s. Wow, I want to do that. <laughs> That's a great job. All right, back to the studio. Until next time, take care. Bye. Some top-notch reporting there, Otto. I agree. You sports fan, Otto? I certainly am, Toby. I just love the competition. Well, TSS Action News sports reporter John P. Walrus is here. John, how you doing? Feeling slick as a fish on a homemade slip and slide, Toby. Can't say I've ever felt the same, John. Not surprised about that. Do you want the sports news or not? Uh, yeah. Well, folks, it's that time of year when, on a cool fall morning, sports fans from all around the state descend on Ann Arbor for a magical weekend filled with athletic excitement. That's right, the local puppet two-on-two -two basketball tournament got started last night. Of special interest to TSS Action News viewers is the team of Big Fred and Little Fred, who are entering their first basketball tournament. A self-described basketball nut, Big Fred's love of basketball knows no bounds, and gravity seems to have a hard time keeping either one of these bullfrogs tied to the court. In their first game, Team Fred's defeated Team Bearcat to advance to out of the first round of the tournament. In their second round matchup, the Freds just couldn't stop dunking en route to an 11 to 1 win over the Snail Squad. Round 3 through 44 are today and tomorrow, so check back with TSS Action News for the results. Back to you, Toby and Otto. You all know I'm impressed with Big Fred's hooping ability. I just didn't think he'd have this level of success with Little Fred at his side. You know what they say. What's that, Otto? Uh, you know, what they say? Something about big things and small frogs? Uh, 
sure, but uh, let's see what they say about the weather. John, are you there in front of your imaginary weather map? Can you uh, tell us what the weather's like today? Hi, I'm John, your weather presenter for TSS Action News. I will be covering your local weather. The current condition is dreary and cool. Therefore, it's drool. Oh, that reminds me. What do you call it when it's pouring ducks and geese? Foul weather. Looking ahead at your three-day forecast, Monday will be cloudy and foggy, making it choggy. Tuesday will we'll have snow and drizzle, making that day snizzle. And Wednesday, we got a line with these big triangles with a low pressure front, with an octothorpe in front of the ampersand. So you know what that means. Summer is coming to an end, folks. What happens when summer comes to an end? Rains cats and dogs. <laughs> I heard Humpty Dumpty had a great summer, but he had a horrible fall. What do snowmen call their offspring? Children. And speaking of chili, the barometric pressure will be 30 and a half. Huh? What does everyone listen to, but no one believes? A weather reporter. Do you know what they call a bear that's caught in a storm? A drizzly bear. How do you prevent a summer cold? Catch it in the winter. Famous quotes from the cloud. To condense or not to condense? That is the question. Let the Thank wind... you, John, but uh, we're gonna have to cut you off. We've got our street reporter, Matt, here with a riveting report. Matt, can you hear me? I don't think I have a favorite barbecue sauce. What's yours? We're live. Uh, it, uh, it seems like Matt can't hear us. Maybe it's your microphone, Otto. Let me give it a shot. Matt, can you hear me? I don't know. We'll see if Matt can fix his audio <laughs> issues and check back with him later. Don't feel bad. Well, folks, it's time for a break, but before we go to commercial, let's check in with a shark who's interviewing locals about, uh... It doesn't say what he's interviewing people about, but I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Hey, it's me, a shark, with a shark on the street. We're here to ask the tough questions. Let's see if we can find somebody. Uh, you, you sir, right over there. Greetings, friend. Just wondering what you thought about the street legality of boat racing. It doesn't seem like the microphone is working, so I'm just going to rough it for now. Hello, my friend. Quick question. This just in. All of civilization is moving into the sea. Where do you expect to make your home down there? Well, uh, I, I can dog paddle. That's as far as I thought that question to Excellent. I'll, I'll join you. Let's go. Uh, excuse me, madam. Yes, hello. Yes. This yes. just hello. in. Uh, we are now literally using clams for money. Would you rather use clams or something different? Hello there. Uh, this just in. We are running out of shrimp. Instead of shrimp, what would you like to see on the buffet? Roar! Sharks. <laughs> This just in, I have a fin. I'm not quite sure what I store in it. You seem to have some humps or one or two or five. What do you store in yours? Well, these humps sure come in handy. I store my toothbrushes and my toothpaste. Yep, that's how I keep my chompers so pretty. All this extra storage upon my back. Look at those teeth, would ya? 
my, what a glorious day it is. And even though I can't really breathe because I'm not underwater, I think you would agree that this is a perfect day. Uh, that seems like a you problem. Well, that's it for Chuck on the Street. I'm sure it was important. ever happened to you? You just finish a game of Cows of Dunshire and decide you want to celebrate with some sweet tuber chow, but you can't remember if you bought yams or sweet potatoes? And what even is the difference anyway? So you decide to get dressed, but while you're putting on your favorite shirt, you realize your cat has sewn up one sleeve so you can't even move? So now you're crashing into everything, and then the doorbell rings, and it's old Gus trying to sell you old 78 records? And when you turn around, he's sitting on your couch eating dry muesli and reading old comic books? Has this ever happened to you? Brought to you by the Committee for United Root Vegetable Nomenclature, Responsible Teaching of Fiber Arts to Cats, and Banning Old Gus from Selling Weird Stuff Door to Door. Welcome back to uh, TSS Action News. Now, Otto, are you a fan of baked goods? I certainly am. My personal chef prepares the best glazed cattails you've ever had. Personal chef? In any case, we've got our youthful canine reporter, Peanut T. Puppy, with a special puppet interest story that's sure to tickle your sweet tooth. Peanut, Peanut, you're on. Um, hello, I'm Peanut Tea Puppy, and welcome to the Treat Town Ultimate Brownie Bake Off! <laughs> Puppets have come together to share their delicious brownie recipes with the hopes of winning the grand prize. Woof! Let's meet our judge! Come on! This is our Ultimate Brownie Bake Off judge, Clarissa, Clarissa, what are you hoping to see today? All I'm hoping to see brownies with a pleasing crackle on top and containing within the perfect balance of fudgy, gooey, cakey, rich, and sweet goodness. And, of course, with subtle hints of algae and crustaceans. Mmm! Mm. Sounds great! Let's check in with a few of the contestants. Hello! Uh, my name is Roy, and my entry in this year's Brownie Bake Off is a color explosion! It is um a colorful and chocolatey and I hope it delights you! Hmm. What a delicate, cakey crumb and very, very colorful, but slightly lacking in flavor as I don't taste any shrimp. But thank you. It looks like Junior here has presented us with a hazelnut supreme brownie, which is quite crunchy, uh, rich, and it has the perfect amount of sweetness. However, I'm not getting the briny undertones I hoped for. Needs more shrimp. Squirrel! Squirrel! Take care of him, Junior. Well, me mother, see, she used to bake these for me when I w was feeling down in the dumpy dudes, you know? Need a bit of a picky. She start with the zebra cake, throw on some of that brine over the tippy top then, and out comes the scrimpy nub nubs in it. Oh, this bake contains everything 
the perfect brownie needs, but I believe it is the topping that makes it the standout delight of the day. And it is for that reason that I would like to present first prize to Fauntleroy. It is a box of something. Bum, ba, da, da, bum, bum, bum. Yay! Fauntleroy, you are the winner, and this is your prize. Ta-da! I, a shark, am your prize. You also win one consolation prize, which is a free singing lesson from me, a shark. Follow me. Uh, But uh, great job, Peanut. We've got a big bag of treats for you when you get back to the studio. Now, Otto, what have we got next? Well, it seems like Matt might have fixed his audio. Let's see what he's got. I don't got. know. I feel like we've been doing too much of the trash report. Here. Matt, can you hear me? I know Toby likes trash, but this is... Matt? Oh, well. Unbelievable. Toby, relax. Well, folks, we here at TSS Action News know that not all of you drive, but- Sorry, Otto, I've got to cut you off. We've got some real live breaking news right here with our breaking news reporter, Herb Nerfler. Herb, what do you got for us? Um, what do I say now? <laughs> oh. Hi there, Herb Nerfler, reporter on the scene of the fast-breaking news story. I am here uh, with this with this young boy. What's your name, sir? Jonah. Uh, Jehoshaphat, yes, uh, and he has told me that there is a mystery going on. There is, actually, Jonah, why don't you tell me what's happening? So there were five apples, and then when I turned around, there was only four. There was, f so in this bowl, there used to be five apples, and now there's how many? Four. Can you count them for us? Four. There's four, apparently. Well, we don't know why this is happening. Nobody knows. Um, there used to be five apples. Maybe Jonah ate one. We don't know. But it looks like, um, who knows? Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Jonah, while we were talking, look what just happened. How many apples are there? Three. There's, are you sure that there's three? Yes. Count them in there. One, two, two three apples. Before our very eyes, something strange is going on in this town. Before our very eyes, there were four apples. Now there's only three apples. We have no idea what's happening, but I'm going to hear, I'm going to report to you all day long on this case because I know that you're worried. <gasps> Jonah, what just happened? What just happened? How many apples are there now? Two. There's only two apples. I hear dogs barking. Maybe there's a stranger here stealing the apples. We have no idea because we're standing right here. We have no idea what's going on because there used to be four apples. Then there was three. Now there's only two. And now there... <laughs> what is happening? Jonah, how many apples are left? One. Why is there only one apple? No one knows what is happening, but these apples keep disappearing. I'm here with the greatest story. We've ever... What just happened? <laughs> How many apples are there? Zero. Zero apples? What is it? Oh! I found the culprit. Why are you stealing our apples? Well, I would say that five apples is too many apples to eat. But once again, Herb Nerfler has solved this mystery. Back to you, Toby and Otto. Thanks, Herb. That's utterly fascinating. Uh, sure, Toby. Next up is Travis. Sorry, Otto, I gotta cut you off again. We've got an update on our record-breaking news story. Meow, 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 Boy, that is one determined kitty. Meow, 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 Absolutely, Otto. Meow. Finally. Toby, you're not gonna interrupt me again, are you? Nope. Okay. We know that not all of you drive. Hold on, Otto. We've got another piece of breaking news. Let's go out to Matt on the street. Can't hear anything. 
You know what? Never mind. Go ahead, Otto. We know that not all of you drive, but let's see what the local traffic looks like. Lucy? Hello, folks. I'm out here on the street today reporting on traffic. Let's take a look. Today, traffic is... Hmm. Traffic is... You know, let's check in with our field correspondent to see what's really going on on the roads. There you have it, folks. The word on the street today is traffic is fun. All right, folks. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to TSS Action News. For Toby, I'm Otto Turtle, and that's the way it is. Good day, everyone. Bye! Friday night took care of my weekday blues I woke up at breakfast and read the news I'm feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the uh, show's about to start Oh yeah, it's a Saturday show It's a Saturday show it's a Saturday show. 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 Party! Yeah, party! A lot of good recipes here. Fred! Oh, hey, I... Shh! Huh? Fred, I've got a big secret to tell you. Oh, a secret? Did you finally figure out where that can is coming from? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, listen up. I'm throwing a party for Toby. A party? Shh! Is the party your secret? Yeah, it is, but I need your help. Do you need me to make another cake? I'm getting pretty good at it. No, I need your help stalling Toby. Okay, we're gonna have the party at the library, and I told Toby I wanted to go to the library today to pick up some books about cats. For the cat that keeps coming around? Yeah, but that's not the point. I put Hazel in charge of planning the party. Huh. Good choice. Thanks. So the party is this afternoon, but Toby said he wanted to go to the library early. And you don't want to spoil the surprise for him. Exactly. So we need to stall Toby so we arrive just in time. And how can I help you? Just follow my lead. Huh. Hey, fellas. Hi, Toby. Hi, Toby. Otto, are you ready to go to the library? I want to go early so I can get back and watch the international scheduling finals. Yeah, Toby, I, uh, I'm ready to go. I just have to find my books to return. You haven't done that yet? No, I was busy this morning. Right, Fred? Oh, yeah. Otto's been in a feud with the local cat that keeps coming to the door. <laughs> what? Never mind that, Toby. Could you help me find my books so we can go? Sure thing. Okay, well, there are some in my room. Let's go. All right. Fred, just sit on this book. Okay.
Thank you, Junior. Everyone, we've got a big task ahead of us. Otto wants to surprise Toby with a party right here in the library at one o'clock. I've asked you here this morning because together you have what it takes to throw the ultimate party. First on the list, decorations. Clarissa, Brian, and Chicken, you three will spiffify this space from top to bottom. Spiffify? Hmm, I wonder. You can count on us, Hazel. Right, Chicken? Second, food. A great party is chock full of fine foods fit for every finger, claw, fin, and paw. Butleroy, can we count on you and a shark? Yeah, right, right, me good time and governess. We got the jamblies and the dingly doos, and it'll be a right rocker. Okay then. Essential party ingredient number three music and dancing. Katie and George, will you bring the moves to put us in a party in groove? Woo! Definitely! George and I, we can bring some tunes that will set the dance floor on fire! Huh? Oh no! Uh, will, will we have to call the fire department? Ha <laughs> ha! George! Oh, <laughs> okay. Music and dancing! You got it, Hazel! Okay, that's almost everything. Remember everyone, everything must be in place by 1 p.m. Kashi and Christopher, will you please get us underway with the word of the day? You bet. Coming up, right, Kashi? Oh, hey, Kashi, what do you have in your mouth? Um, it's a lemon. Oh, have you been to the market and are we making lemonade today? I think so, I got so much good stuff, but I wanna make lemonade. What? Why are we making lemonade? Because it's Toby's birthday! Wait, is it a birthday or just a party? I don't even know! <laughs> That's right, it's a surprise party for Toby. Shh, don't say it too loud! <laughs> okay. Now, you know, there are a lot of different kinds of parties in the world. I know, I love parties! So do I. One of my favorite parties well, you can have a birthday party or a homecoming party. People celebrate all different things. And you know, since we are talking about parties, I thought we'd see if Lexi has something for us today. Oh, good! And hey, where is Lexi these days? Uh, oh, I, I know. know. Oh, she's Lexi. right here. What are you doing up there? Well, let's see if she's got something for us. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? It says Jubilee. That's right, it is Jubilee. And a Jubilee is usually a kind of big anniversary of some great event. Like if it was your 50th anniversary of being in a house, you could have a golden Jubilee of living in your home. That's so silly, nobody could be 50. <laughs> That's, 50 years, that's so many! That is a lot of years, that's right. And Kashi, are you ready for the word of the day? Okay, I'm ready. Okay, here it is. This word is seven letters okay, long. Okay, seven. And it's sort of like a compound word. We're going to just call it one today because we can find two other words in it. The first word is a part of your body. It's a bone between your foot and your knee. Oh! And the second word is something you do with a shovel. Okay. And if you put them together, you get the name of another fun party. Okay. And if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big Point! That's right. 
Until next time. Bye. Bye. Well, Otto, we've got all your books. Fred, I can't believe you didn't feel that one underneath you. Eh, what can I say, Toby? I was relaxing. Still. All right, Otto, you ready to go to the library now? Um, well, actually... Actually, Toby, I, uh... I forgot to cook Otto his breakfast this morning. Yeah, yeah. How'd you manage that, Fred? Well, uh, I was going to, but then I couldn't find Otto. Turns out he was waiting in the window to continue his feud with the neighborhood cat. Uh, yeah. I was waiting for the cat. That's why I wasn't there for breakfast. But looking for those books has left me famished. I could really use some food before we go. You know, mind food. Okay. I suppose we've got time. Great. Uh, Fred, do you want to get started on some brunch? Sure thing, Otto. All right, Fred. We still have to stall. What can you do? I could, uh, I could make a really big breakfast. that take a long time. That might help. Okay, okay. That sounds good. Toby, are you hungry too? Sure, I'll have a bit, but remember, we gotta get going. Okay, just uh, sit tight right there and breakfast will be right up. this I hear about some kind of surprise bash or is it more of a mash? Hello Shark Tumbly, I'm prepping up the right fromage of the Belle France for that soup price cracker what we've been planning for months now, isn't it? Ah, some sort of Lohigato or Cullen Skink? Not quite, old beast. I've got the Griac, the Emmental, uh, wait, wait, who's going to be at this party? Is it for me, a shark? Well, we got your bell footler on, that's me. Uh-oh, big friend, Hazel, Clarissa, Kashi, Chicken, Katie, George, Brian of the Woods. And all of them only like cheese? As your resident gourmand, I decree that we can do better. Let's start with me. A shark. One bucket of fish guts. What, Chan? A gourd for Hazel. Hey? Shrimp for Clarissa. Ah. Grass and larva for Big Fred. Huh. Cat food for Katie. What? Dog food for George. Hmm. Pine cones for Brian. Yeah? Chicken for chicken. Strawberries for Otto. Brilliant! And what would you like, Fontleroy? Well, I've been thinking about it, and I reckon I'd like some. I'm afraid we're fresh out of that, but I'll toss in this jar of pickled pickle juice just for you. I prefer me mother's zebra dandies, but that sounds excellent. Anything else before we crank this baby to 700 degrees? Oh, oh, how about some charcuterie? I'm right here. No, 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 you cheeky blender. Charcuterie! Yes, as I said, I'm right here. Now, 
why don't you get the skewers and the bread cubes and I'll melt this all down into a frothy delight. The scents and textures and larva. Let's form this fame. All right, guys, I think we ate enough to last us till next week. Are you ready to go, Otto? <sighs> that was a great meal, Fred. Thanks, Otto. I really enjoyed cooking all that food. Sorry it took so much time, Toby. It's okay, Fred. We all gotta eat. Otto, are you ready to go? Yeah, I think I am ready, but, um... I didn't, uh, I didn't put on my shell polish this morning. A guy's gotta look good for a trip to the library. Are you sure that can't wait? I really wanna go so we can get back. Come on, Toby, it'll only take a second. Okay, well, why don't you go put on your shell polish and Fred, will you help me pack up the truck? Yeah. Fred, you should definitely help Toby with the truck. Wink, wink. Did you just say wink, wink? Uh, no. I'll be waiting for you outside. We need more time, Fred. You've got to do something. Don't worry. I got you, cuz. Well, looks like that's it. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna go get Otto. Uh, whoa, 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 wait, Toby. What is it, Fred? Uh, the other day when you came home, I thought I heard something funny coming from your truck. Yeah? What did it sound like? Uh, kind of like... Hmm... Blub, 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 blub. Yep, exactly. Why don't you hop in the driver's seat and I'll take a look under the hood. I didn't know you knew about trucks, Fred. Oh, yeah. Once upon a time, I was a uh, car fixer guy. A mechanic? Yeah, that. Hop in there and pop the hood. Okay. Oh yeah, Toby, lots of work needs to be done in here. What do you mean, Fred? Ah, uh, your what's a who's it is unplugged. Looks like you might need to replace the drive magnet too. What a bummer. Here, let me take a look. Hey, Katie. What are you up to? Play solitaire? Oh, hi, George. No, I'm just finishing up our playlist for the big surprise party today. Good idea. We gotta get that done. Hazel said to bring music and dance and I've been Trying to think of some good songs everybody will like. Oh, did you think of some? I can add them to the playlist. We got some good ones so far. Okay, I was thinking about these ones. Corny Dog Dime Store by Charles Fogg and Dolph Flips. That Wagon Ain't Broke, Let's Fix It by Mabel. My number one by Kermit Nelson and Turtlebirds and Dittleflies by Trunch Shelch. I like that one. Oh, those are some good ones. Let's add them. Thanks, George. Oh, well, we, we almost have enough songs. Hazel expects us to bring some dancing. We need one more. Knock your socks off dance song. Why 
what if, Katie, what if everybody doesn't want to dance? I mean, you do, and I always want to dance, and we dance so good, but not, not everybody loves it. Sometimes it's hard for people to know what to do with their body when the music is on. Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? You bet I am. Randa, where's that boombox? Did somebody say boombox? Oh yeah. Now we are ready to party. Let's go. Well, that wasn't too much to fix. I wonder how that got unplugged, though. Are you sure you used to be a mechanic, Fred? Pretty sure. Maybe I wasn't. Who knows these days? Fred, do you think Otto doesn't want to go to the library today? He's been stalling a lot. I know he was pretty excited to go. You should ask him. I think I will. Hey, Otto. Yeah, Toby? Do you uh, not want to go to the library today? I've been noticing that you're taking a long time getting ready and I'm starting to feel like you don't want to go. Mm, well... It's okay, bud. We don't have to go today. We can go get books another day. No! I mean, no. I would like to go very much. Then why are you stalling? Uh... Um... Uh... It's because of the cat! The cat? Yeah, the neighborhood cat. I just, uh, I don't want to go outside. Because of the cat? Yeah, I'm just <sighs> so scared of the cat. Wait, what time is it, Toby? It's, um, it's almost 1 p.m. Okay, I'm not scared of the cat anymore. Let's go. Huh? Thanks for driving me to the library, Toby. I'm gonna go get some books about cats. All right, Otto. Decorations, check. Music and dancing, check. Food, check. Wow, Hazel, everything looks so good. And you got it finished right on time. Absolutely. Let's party. All right, everybody hide. The surprise is almost here. Hey, Toby, come over here. Otto? What do you need? Surprise! Surprise! Otto, what is all this? Toby, you've been a great friend and a great co-worker, so I wanted to throw you a little surprise party. Aw, thanks so much, Otto. You shouldn't have. Thank you, everybody. Are you ready to dance? Let's do it. Boogie, 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 boogie
What is it, Ruby? It's a party and we've got to dance. Move those feet now, this is your chance. We're all stretched out and we're ready to dip. This ain't no shuffle, we're not doing the whip. This is how we do it, yeah, it goes like this. Fun pubs and fun kids. Here we go. Move it to the right, right, left. set here you ready to take off yeah i got some really good books i'm excited to get home and read them all right well i'm gonna go start the car uh i'm right behind you but toby oh oh yeah we can't carry him junior What's that? You're trying to get back home? Hmm, well, I'm not entirely sure where you live. Do you? Oh, uh, hmm. Oh, hi, Junior. Toby, Junior needs to get home, but they're not sure which way home is. You're not sure which way to go, Junior? Well, Otto, it looks like we've got an adventure on our hands. Ooh, adventure. Yep, we've got to get Junior here back home to Hazel. That sounds like a mighty fine quest. Indeed it is, my little green friend. Junior, can we help you get back home? All right, then let's go. It's a Saturday show. 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 Nature. All right, let the quest begin. Ah, uh, where should we start? You know, that's a great question. Yeah, it is. Huh. What's this? <laughs> Of course, Lauren would know where to go, but where's Lauren? I saw him earlier. He said he was going to head over to the woods. Then that's where we shall go. Onward, my friends. Lauren's gotta be around here somewhere. There's so many big trees here. Maybe one of them is Junior's house. No? Bummer. Otto, don't be silly. You knew this quest wouldn't be that easy. We're here to find Lauren. Oh, look. There he is. Lauren! Good sir, we found you. I didn't know you were looking for me. We have been. We're on a quest. 
Ooh, are you gonna throw the ring into Mount Doom? Uh, no. Of course, that would be silly. Are you sure you don't have the one ring? Nope, but we do have Junior. Junior! Yeah, Junior was in the library and he's trying to get home, but he doesn't remember which way home is. Junior suggested you could help us since you know Hazel so well. That does seem like quite the quest. So will you help us? Of course. Okay, so which way do we go now? Well, before we proceed, I think it would be wise to pause and take a lesson from this magical forest. Huh? What do you mean? Yeah, Lauren, this isn't some fantasy story. We're not in some sort of magical forest, are we? Yeah, Junior, that's right. Junior says that there's more to this forest than what meets the eye. Human scientists are learning that trees can communicate and even cooperate with each other. Whoa, that's amazing! Yeah, how did the trees manage to do that? Well, it's happening quietly. Right here, right now, right underneath us, in the dirt. You know that trees have roots, right? Yeah, we passed a tree that fell over back there. It gave us a good look at its exposed roots. Healthy trees can extend their roots deep into the soil, and with the help of microscopic organisms called fungi, they can connect up with other trees to help each other out. Fungi? Like mushrooms? Right, Otto. The scientific name is mycelium. They spread out everywhere under a forest, crisscrossing the soil and going in different directions. It's the web that keeps trees in constant communication with one another. What do they communicate about? Well, for instance, if one tree was sick and needed water, it could send out a help message to its community. A neighbor tree that had a lot of water could use that same mycelium web to share its water supply with its neighbor in need. That's amazing! I think I'm beginning to see the lesson here. We should cooperate like the trees do, right? Exactly, Otto. Let's listen to each other and work together like the trees do. If we can manage that, we're bound to complete our quest. Right, little buddy? All right, let's go. What is it, Junior? Uh, Warren, I, uh, I think that's what he's scattering about. Uh, uh, everybody hide! Who or what is that? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, hi, everybody! Ah, it's Elizabeth! Elizabeth, what are you doing out here dressed like that? This is my wetsuit. I was just enjoying some nature. I didn't startle you all, did I? No. Yes. No. Well, let me show you what I saw. You wouldn't believe the amazing things that I saw that live in the Huron River. I saw many different kinds of fish swimming, including largemouth bass, bluegill, and northern pike. I saw some beautiful lily pads growing up from the river bottom to spread out on the river surface. And I saw river grasses waving in the water currents. I saw lots of rocks on the river banks and bottom, and I even saw some crawdads living among the rocks. One of them that I saw was a little angry that I got too close. I love seeing what lives in the river. Wow, that's amazing, Elizabeth! Yeah, Otto, I know we're on a quest to get Junior home, but we sure are learning a lot about nature along the way. It's almost as if all this was intentional. Oh well, Elizabeth, would you like to join us on our quest? Absolutely! Let's go.
Hey, is that Kashi and Christopher over there? It definitely looks like them. Hi, Kashi and Christopher. Hey, everybody. Beautiful day, isn't it? Hey, you two. We're on a quest. Do you have any words of wisdom? Thanks, Toby. Hey, Kashi, does that look like Lexi over there? Shall we go see if she's got something for us? Yeah, let's go. All right. Well, hey, Kashi, look who you found. You found Lexi. I <laughs> Well, listen, you know, we're talking all about nature today. And isn't it wonderful to be in nature? I just love it. I love the trees and the wet leaves and how it smells. And... Ah, all the flora and fauna are wonderful. Yeah. Well, listen, I think we should get right into our word of the day. Okay. Do you think that Lexi's got something for us? Oh, I'm sure she does. Okay, let's find out. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this? It says Walden. That's right, it does say Walden. What's a Walden? I don't know. <laughs> well, Walden was the name of a pond in Massachusetts, and there was a writer named Thoreau who lived at the pond for two years, two months, and two days, and he wrote all about the nature that he saw there. That's a long time. That is a long time. Well, Kashi, are you ready for the summer game code? We've just about got enough time before we rejoin the group. Okay. Here it is. It is 11 letters. That's as many letters as there are in my name, Kashi. Wow. And it means a period of deep sleep that certain animals go into in the winter time. Do you know any animals that do this, Kashi? Um, maybe chipmunks? <laughs> yep, chipmunks and squirrels like hazel. And especially, Kashi, do you know which animal? Bears! Bears do this. Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big That's right! Okay, Kashi, I think we better get back to the group and leave Lexi to enjoy nature. Okay, bye, Lexi. <laughs> Would you two like to join us? We're helping Junior here get back home. Absolutely. Hey. Is that Big Fred over there? Oh, hi Otto. Fred, we're going on a quest to get Junior home. Do you want to come? Nah, thanks for the invite, but this is my creek time. Oh, okay. Well, enjoy the creek. Have fun. to cross here? Yep. Uh, are you sure? I'm so glad we're going on this nature walk together, Chicken. It is such a beautiful day out. I wonder what we'll find. I've really enjoyed taking pictures of all the really cool things we've seen on our nature walks. My favorite is when we see really colorful flowers. 
Do you remember all the different flowers we've seen this year, chicken? Ooh, I see one now. What kind of game do you want to play today, chicken? We could do a nature photography scavenger hunt. We could take a picture every 20 steps we take, or we could just see what we find. Great. I can look upward and you can look close to the ground. You're really good at that. Found chicken. Let's keep going. I hear something. Is it water? I just love nature photography. It's such a great way to slow down, explore, celebrate nature, and get creative. Wow, what is that? Allison! Oh, hi everyone. I was just out here with chicken taking some pictures. That's a great way to observe nature. I agree. Hey, what are you all doing? We're on a quest to take Junior back home. Do you want to join us? Sure, that sounds like fun. I'm seeing it. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a red-bellied woodpecker. Wow. Another bird off our list. We've seen so many birds today. How neat. I know. This is so much fun. I love being outside in the woods. And it's neat how you can see and hear and smell ah, the nature all around us. <sighs> That's my favorite part too, Katie. We're using our senses out in nature. Let's keep going and see what else we can find. Amanda, listen to the sound of your feet on the ground. Wow, I bet there are bugs and animals living under there, under the leaves and the dirt. Oh, you're right, Katie. There's all kinds of things down there. I see leaves and twigs, acorns but no bird prints. We better keep our eye on the sky.
Wait. Katie, do you hear that? It sounds like many feet walking. Maybe it's deer. Hi, Amanda. Hi, everyone. We're taking Junior back home. Do you want to come with us? Ooh, Amanda, can, can we keep walking with them? I think we can, Katie. It looks like we've magically gathered up almost the whole crew. Maybe everyone had the same idea as us to enjoy nature today. That's right, Toby. And that would mean Lucy and Clarissa are around here somewhere. Katie and I saw both of them a while ago. Yeah, I was able to cross off Flamingo from my bird watching list. I think they're just ahead on the trail. Well, then let's go. I think we're getting close to Junior's home. Clarissa, I'm so glad you decided to come out with me today to take some impressions of trees. Well, it's lovely out, but I'm not sure how to take an impression of this tree. Well, that's where the crayons come in. Did you pick some good colors? I picked these colors because for some reason, I'm drawn to pink. All right, well, let's get started. Find a place on the tree where you want to make an impression of the bark. Then you put your paper on it and you just take the flat side of your crayon and you rub. Well, that's just marvelous. What a wonderful way to remember what we saw on our walk today. That's right, it is. And the best part is, we're gonna leave everything just as we found it, but we still get to remember what we saw. When we get home, we can even write down the names of all the trees we saw on the impressions that we took. I told you there was a flamingo around here. You were absolutely right, Katie. Hi, Lucy. Hi, we were just doing some bark rubbings. Well, the gang's all here. Lucy and Clarissa, do you want to join us in helping get Junior home? Well, I was due for some tea and a soap, but it might be more fun to walk for a bit. Ah, uh, yeah, we'd be happy to join you. That's great, Lucy, but you know this nature walk is making me hungry. I think it's about time for a snack. So, you know, the new Philately Quarterly came in. Did you know that, Katie? And I can't wait to see how they've priced the new penny stamps. They're going to be great. Uh, Christopher, are you going to pick that up? Oh yeah, that's right, littering is bad. Alrighty then, we should get going. Oh, there you are, Junior. I was starting to get worried about you. Junior was at the library and asked for some help getting home. Well, thank you so much, everyone. We're glad to help. Boy, I'm glad we could get Junior back home, and we learned a lot about nature. We sure did, Otto. Uh, Toby, I do have one question, though. What's that, bud? How do we get home? Friday night took care of my weekday blues. I woke up at breakfast and read the news. 
feeling relaxed, refreshed and renewed But I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to do Hey, uh, Toby, the, uh, show's about to start Oh yeah It's a Saturday show 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 it's a Saturday show. It's a Saturday show. Animals. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Saturday Show, AADL TV's one and only Saturday morning kids variety show. My name is Toby. And I'm Otto. And on this episode of The Saturday Show, we're exploring all things animals. Animals? Yeah, we talked about this. I know, just making sure you're paying attention. We've talked about habitats. We've talked about nature. And now we're turning our attention to all the amazing creatures, great and small, in the Kingdom Animalia. Toby, do you know what makes an animal an animal? Nope. Then it's the perfect time for a fat desk. Good morning, everyone. I'm Otto Turtle, and this is the Fat Desk. An animal is a living organism that consumes organic material, like salads or steaks, breathes oxygen, and are able to move and contain many millions of tiny, tiny little cells. Scientists estimate that there are over 7 million different animal species, such as eels, jellyfish, blue jays, spiders, crabs, starfish, humans, and, you guessed it, turtles. Oh, and the smallest animals are 0.00033 inches long, and the biggest one are 110 feet long. Whoa! Animals, they're everywhere. And those are the facts. I'm Otto Turtle. Thanks for that, Otto. I'm an animal. You're an animal. Looks like we've got more in common than our shared love of strawberries and fish. That we do, Toby. Hey, it's another animal. Big Fred. Hi, Fred. Hey there, fellas. Fred, we're uh, filming the show here. What's up? Oh, I know you're doing the show. I just heard from the other room that you're talking about animals today. We are, Fred. Yeah, well, I thought I could help you guys out. That's really nice of you. What have you got? Well, I know that Otto is an animal. He's a turtle, a Blanding's turtle. I know that Toby's an animal. He's a human. I know that I'm an animal. I'm a frog. But I don't know what kind of frog I am. You don't? No. I heard you say there's over 7 million species of animals out there. So I gotta be one of them. Okay, Fred. I think we can help you. We're gonna need some books. Oh, and how about an easel and some markers and poster board? Yeah, that sounds good. Why don't we take a second to gather up some supplies, and in the meantime, Kashi and Christopher hit us with the word of the day. Thanks, Toby. Hey, Kashi, how you doing today? Oh, hi, I'm great. <laughs> you know, we're talking all about animals today on this episode of The Saturday Show. Oh, I know. So do I. They're such a wonderful part of life. You know, I thought we could activate Lexi and see if she can tell us about some famous celebrity animals. Oh, that's a great idea. All right. Do you want to activate Lexi? Okay. Whoa, Kashi, who is that? That's Asta. 
Oh, you mean like that was the dog in the Thin Man movies? Exactly. Oh, I loved Asta so much. Let's see who else Lexi has for us. Oh, I know who these two dogs are. It's Bielka and Strielka, two dogs that went into space and came back down, showing that space travel was safe for everyone. Really? That's right. Wow. You ready for the next one? Oh, well, this is a famous gorilla, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know who? Her name, her name was Coco. Oh, that's right. It is Coco. Coco is amazing because she could communicate using gorilla sign language. That's right. I think Lexi's got one more for us. Well, this is a pretty stately looking cat. <laughs> Socks was pretty famous in the White House. So, Kashi, are you ready for our word of the day? I am. Okay, hit it, Lexi. Well, let's see what it says. Can you read this, Kashi? Nope. <laughs> well, that says... Goodall, as in Jane Goodall. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. That's right. She is probably the world's most famous and best authority on chimpanzees. She is pretty awesome. And now, Kashi, are you ready for the summer game code? I am. It's a good one this time. It's nine letters. Wow. The Latin name for this animal, and we are talking about an animal, is Gulo Gulo. Mm. This animal is known for being very fierce. And of course, it's the unofficial state animal of Michigan. Oh, <laughs> now I think I know what you're talking about. Of course, about. that's right, Kashi. So if you think you know the answer, you can go to play.aadl.org for... Big point! That's right! Until next time! Bye! Bye! Okay, I've got the books. And I've got the easel and the poster board and a marker. And I've got me! Good, looks like we're all set. Uh, Toby... I'm going to need a few minutes to read through this material before we get started. That's reasonable. Why don't you do that and we'll keep the show going. Well, no, Katie. I do not think that Amanda will let that rabbit out there come live inside our house. But why not? It's cute and furry like us. But it's home is outside with its family. And that one is not domesticated like we are. Domestic what? According to Webster Dictionary, domesticated means adapted over time as by selective reading from a wild or natural state to life in close association with and to the benefit of humans. Well, I think Allison has a friend with a pet bunny. Oh, Mopsy, yeah! But she's not a wild rabbit. You can't just bring wild bunnies in the house. That will not go well. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Wild animals live outside and Domesticated animals like cats and dogs can live inside. In fact, dogs and cats have both been domesticated for many thousands of years. Wow, that's amazing! And then there are domesticated animals like cows, sheep, and horses that do not live inside but live alongside humans. 
Wow, I love that. There are so many different kinds of animals in the world that have their own purpose and place. Hey, Amanda. Yeah, Katie? Oh, hi. Um, do you think you can tell us the story of how you adopted us? That's a good one. Oh, that is a good one. Here, let's cuddle up on the couch together and I'll tell it. One day, I decided my house was too quiet and I knew I needed a pet to keep me company. So off I headed to the Humane Society. What is it? It looks like it belongs on an animal. It appears to be a tiny claw hidden by fur, but it's not part of a foot or a paw. What is it? Welcome to the Treat Town Puppy School. I am your teacher, Professor Peanut Tea Puppy. Today, we will be studying amazing animal facts. Did you know giraffe spots are unique to each animal, just like human fingerprints? Jellyfish do not have a brain. Ha ha! Elephants cannot jump, but mice are excellent jumpers. They can jump nearly 18 inches in the air. Seahorses do not have teeth. However, snails have the most teeth of any animal. They have thousands of tiny teeth lined up in rows. The world's lightest mammal, the bumblebee bat, weighs about as much as two M&Ms. Mmm, yum! Lions are known to rest for around 20 hours a day. Me too! Chickens have a rapid eye movement phase of sleeping, which means they can dream! And finally, in 2011, Victoria the Basset Hound was elected as co-mayor of Concord, Ontario. She is my hero! All right, that's the end of our lesson for today. Squeak, your homework is to jump 19 inches in the air. Chicken, your homework is to dream he can do it. Please have your homework ready by the next class period. Class dismissed. Giraffe, sparrow, lobster, huh? All right, Otto, did you find a place to start? Yeah, there are 5,000 species of frogs in the world, give or take a few. Well, that doesn't narrow it down too much. Hmm, how many frogs are there in North America? Uh, 109. Okay, that helps. Fred, are you from North America? Absolutely, big guy. I'm from the East Coast. I guess I could have guessed that, but I'll write it down. Yeah, Toby, let's ask Fred some questions and you write down his answers and then we can figure out what kind of frog he is. Are you okay with that, Fred? Are you gonna ask me any personal questions? Uh, no. Okay, 
then I'm king. What did the horse say when it fell? I've fallen and I can't giddy up. How would you describe a rabbit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a treadmill. Okay. And a rabbit. Yeah, right, right, right. With a carrot on his head. Ah, uh, oh, no, no. One is a fit bunny, and one is a bit funny. Oh. Why does a flamingo lift up one leg? Because if she lifted up both, she would fall over. Hey, Christopher. <laughs> hey, Zelly. Wanna hear a joke? Sure. What animal is out of bounds? Uh, well, I don't know. An exhausted kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call the stuff that gets stuck in a shark's teeth? Slow swimmers. Hi everyone, Elizabeth here. These chickens belong to my friends. They live in my friend's yard in a chicken coop and they also have a big fenced in area where they can get some exercise and peck at the ground for bugs and seeds. My friends got the chickens to use them for their eggs. Since the chickens were super little when they arrived in a special box in the mail, they didn't realize that one of them would turn out to be a rooster. The rooster can't lay eggs, but he's useful for watching over the other chickens and making sure that they all stay together and don't wander off. He also says cock-a-doodle-doo, just like you would expect a rooster to do. During the day, the chickens like to be outside exploring. 
it's fun to give them some bird seed to eat because they love it. Sometimes my friends will even let them out of their fenced area and they walk around the whole yard pecking for bugs and seeds. At night, the chickens return to their coop to sleep. The coop is where they sleep and also where they lay their eggs. Every day, my friends go out and collect eggs from the chickens. Usually the chickens are sitting on them to keep them warm and sometimes they don't want to move but a little bird seed will get them up. Sometimes my friends get up to nine eggs a day from the chickens. In the winter, the chickens spend more time in their coop staying warm. It isn't heated but there is a small heater in their water so that it doesn't turn to ice and so that the chickens always have water to drink. Sometimes they huddle together to keep warm. Every so often, a chicken accidentally escapes the coop and the fenced in area, like this chicken did here, and my friends have to chase it down and guide it back to safety. If it stayed outside of the fence at night, a predator might go after. My friends have had a lot of fun caring for their chickens, and they always have fresh eggs to eat. Would you ever want to have these silly birds in your backyard? All right, Fred, are you ready? We're gonna send some rapid fire questions your way, and you just answer them as honestly as you can. Sounds good to me. All right, Fred. Here we go. Compared to other frogs, how big are you? Oh, I'm probably the biggest. Definitely the biggest I've ever seen. Good, good. Okay, what are your favorite foods? Well, I really like pizza. Wait, do frogs eat pizza, Otto? Nope. Okay, but Fred, if you could put any topping on that pizza, what would the topping be? Hey, pretty much anything I can get my hands on. Uh, some fish, some beetles, maybe some snails. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, I've eaten a snake before. Spiders, crayfish, maybe a bird here and there. You can fit all of that in your mouth? Oh yeah, I mean, if it's too big, I just use my hands to help, like this. Okay, food, check. You writing this down, Toby? Um, yeah, but after that last answer, can we take a baby animal break? Sure thing. That was nice. Go ahead, Otto. Okay, Fred, how high can you jump? Oh, like really high, at least like four feet high. Is that high? Yeah. Um, what color are you, Fred? Well, Tasha always compliments my color. She says I'm olive green with hints of grayish brown. She really knows how to compliment a guy. That's good, Fred. You still got this, Toby? Oh, 
All right, I'll keep going. It's a dewclaw. A dewclaw is a digit on the foot of many birds, reptiles, and mammals, like dogs. It is an extra toe that grows higher than the rest of the foot and does not touch the ground when the animal is standing. Dewclaws are useful for dogs in several ways. They give them traction, and some dogs use their dewclaws to help them climb trees, hold objects to better chew on them, or climb out of the water if they've broken through ice. Dewclaws are essentially the thumbs and big toes of the dog world. After reading a book together one day, Lauren and Hazel felt inspired to search for great horned owls in Hazel's neighborhood. Because owls are nocturnal, meaning they're active at night, they waited for dusk, and then Lauren put on his warmest coat and packed his biggest flashlight. Hazel tucked away a few refreshments, and they were off. They knew that if they wanted to spy an owl, they had to be very quiet. Shh. Owls can be startled by loud human noises, and as for squirrel noises, well, Hazel wanted to play it safe. Owls are on the hunt for food at night, after all. Great horned owls like to live high up in the trees. They'll often make their homes out of leftover nests that other birds make. Sometimes they'll even use old squirrel nests. Hazel, shh. After a time, Lauren tried mimicking a great horned owl call. Ooh, 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 ooh. It seemed to work in the book. Lauren, shh. Sorry, okay. Lauren and Hazel tried to stay alert, but being daytime creatures. Hey, you two, wake up. Thanks, narrator. Remember that if you decide to go owl spotting, there's no guarantee that you'll find one, and that's okay. Hey, Hazel. Um, my, uh, tail is getting cold. Right. Let's get you home. But maybe, just maybe... Lauren! Shh! <laughs> If you'd like to read a thrilling story about searching for owls, check out Owl Moon from your library. Just a couple more questions here, cuz. Keep them coming, Otto. Okay, what do you do in the winter? I've become a big fan of Hugo. Hugo? Hugo. Hugo. No, I mean when it gets really cold, where do you go? Well, before I stayed here with you guys, I would just go to the bottom of the pond and hibernate. That makes sense. Where's your favorite place to hang out? Gotta be the creek, but... Anywhere near water, really. Good. Good answer. Okay, Toby, that's all the questions I've got. What do you have? Okay, so here's what I got. Fred is from the United States, the East Coast. He's big, really big, like probably the biggest frog that he's ever seen. Um, he eats fish and beetles and snails and other stuff. Um, he can jump really high, at least four feet high. That's high, Fred. Um, his color is olive green slash gray brown. He can hibernate in the winter, and his favorite place to hang out is near water. It's where I find most of my food. 
Is that enough info to figure it out, Otto? Uh, unfortunately, no. Fred is right. He's definitely a frog. Let me take a look. Let's see here. Aha! I've got it! What is it, Toby? Fred, do you like to sing? Of course! Remember I sang that song about all the places that I visited? Yeah, but do you ever sing anything else? Toby, what does this have to do with what kind of frog Fred is? Just trust me, Otto. Fred, have you ever sang anything else? I mean, I like to hum to myself here and there. Have you ever sang anything for Tasha? Oh yeah. She said I was the best singer in our cooking class. She said I had the best frog voice she ever heard. Do you think you could sing that song for us now? Uh, it's a little embarrassing, but if it helps. There it is! That was great, Fred! Yeah, Fred, you're a bullfrog. That call is unmistakable. A bullfrog, eh? Yeah, bullfrog, the largest frog in North America, can jump four feet high, although we know you can jump higher based on your basketball skills. I'm an all-star! You are, Fred! Yeah, and bullfrogs eat just about anything they can catch. Maybe that's why you're such a good cook. Just trying to be the best! And you are the best, Fred. The best bullfrog and the best friend. Oh, Otto, thanks, pal. And thank you both for helping me figure out what kind of frog I am. I just feel so fulfilled. You sure you couldn't go for some lunch? Heh, why not? Want me to rustle up some snakes? I'm just kidding, fellas. Fred! Well, folks, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us on our animal adventure. If you'd like some more information about some of the stuff you saw on today's show, you can go to aadl.org slash the Saturday show. And if you'd like to drop us a line, you can send an email to tss at aadl.org. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time. Keep 